By the way, Ed Mel, the ref says you're not allowed to stop her or stop in your run-up. And I've gone, and you're f telling me that now. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I remember we had a corner as soon as I came on, and I've run on Luke Aylins to grab me. He's got, got a fucking goal in you, And I'm like, I don't know if I do. Get yeah, 200 out of that. 200, 200, 200, 200 likes and we'll do 200 Carl. likes, Carl will carry on to Ryan Edmonton. You saw it here, we shook hands <laughs> with Edmonton. Right, everyone ready? Are we all ready to go? Sound yeah? me. Let's have it. Right. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Last Ditch Podcast. Today we are privileged to be joined by Ryan Edmondson. How are Carl we? United's number nine. <laughs> uh, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on. Nah, this no is, problem. No problem. Brilliant. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. Um, yeah, basically what we start with every, every time we get a guest on is who, in your eyes, is the greatest footballer of all time? Oof. See this, um, I can't lie. For me, I've always been a Ronaldo man. I, I, I mean, <laughs> yes, I've, um, that's <laughs> I've got one of green and three giving me death stares. But um, <laughs> I've always been a Ronaldo man. I think just his work ethic in the game and the way he sculpted himself to be is just for me ridiculous. I mean, Messi, don't get me wrong, like natural born talent wise, it's just it's silly. Yeah. But I can't even like. Even like Mbappe and Neymar now, like nowadays, they don't even touch no. any of them. Like they're not even close. No. Ronaldo and Messi, like when they were younger, it's just, it's silly. Like Ronaldo at Madrid and Messi like breaking through a Barca and that's just, it's, it's funny stupid. That, cause a lot of people tend to be really Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah, and like that's awesome. literally you said is exactly what I always say. And he's done it in the different leagues. Yeah. Messi's naturally gifted, but Ronaldo has like made himself the player he is. And yeah. I think that... Stands for a little bit more, I think. I, guess. I, I think in in the football game, just the way he goes about himself, like yeah. as a professional. Like, I think I remember seeing um, Harry Maguire or someone when Ronaldo went back to United. They were saying that they'd had a big bust up in the canteen or something because one of the players were having a brownie after his dinner, <laughs> <laughs> and Ronaldo had gone past him and like, "What are you eating that for?" Yeah. Um, and the standards there, that's the one, isn't it? United, like the standards with some of them players just won't be there, and he's yeah. coming back and they're thinking like. You think if Ronaldo was there, some of the players you could see were idolising him. Yeah. And you think, why are you not just copying everything he's doing? Look at that's the level. I mean. I th yeah. That's what I mean. I think like nowadays the games change so much. Like, what's Ronaldo now? Like 38, 39? Yeah. And it's like you come back into a top Premier League club yeah. and you're still keeping those same morals, same standards. Yeah. Whereas everyone else is probably looking and going, stop being so busy, man. Like, yeah. Give it a uh, rest. Right. Like, you're 38, you've done what you need to do. Yeah. Um, First and last away and all but, that kind like, of stuff. Like, for me, just the way he goes about his game and like goal scoring ability and stuff, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Is that, like, is that like a player that you mould your game off of then? Who, who, is, who would you say is the player you mould your game off? Because every, every, every footballer has one done. Yeah, of course I do. Um, and like, my family through and through have always been Leeds United fans. Um, and, said and, I was going to be the question of who did you support when you were young yeah. and he was like Leeds I, had, I, had a, I had a season ticket at Leeds for about seven oh, years oh, um, so to hear that so <laughs> <laughs> used to play for him you can't say that I'm joking <laughs> can't um, we graduate here um, yeah so I'd always like watch back when Leeds were like in the Champions League and I like Mark Viduka and stuff like that yeah. it was just I thought he was so like big strong and powerful like that's kind of what my kind of raw talents were as a kid. I was yeah. always just big, quick, like as a powerful striker. So that's kind of what I tried to more don't get me wrong, I'm nowhere near there yet. <laughs> <laughs> um but you know, I'm twenty two, I've still got time. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think if I was to base that off one person it would be Viduka probably. Yeah. Um, well, it's good it's good to sometimes have that kind of person to look at, even like when you're saying you're young still, you've yeah. still got that kind of kind of pathway that you can look at and you know it's not like you have to become them you can become your own player in a yeah. different like sense um but as you say because obviously being Leeds fan you're in the youth system yeah so I started off um I was kind of in and out of academies as a kid yeah. you know um I think the the more crazy one was Huddersfield Town I was at Huddersfield Town for I think about so I went on trial there and I had two trial sessions they gave me a six-week game contract so I could play games for six weeks yeah. scored four in my first game they gave me a like proper contract after that yeah and then I was about what was I, I was playing I think I was about 14 at the time 13 mm -hmm. 14 
playing for the under 16s and the under 18s and wow. scoring for fun. Um, I remember I, I trained with the first team a couple of times as well at the age of like 14. Yeah. Um, and I was absolutely flying there and then just out in them, but where when I was 14, they had a new like recruitment and management staff come in yeah. and everyone just got wiped out. Really? And it was like 14 year old, I thought, that's probably me done that. Like, that's hard, that's it, like, get something like that. And then I just went back to playing Sunday League football um, for about a year. Um, nothing was coming really. And then where we were in Harrogate, we, I played for a team called Panel Sports. And basically in our own age group, we were just ridiculous. We, we didn't lose. Like yeah, we'd, we'd, right. we'd never get every game in double figures. Like just be You always had them teams, didn't you? Yeah, did I was you always, always had one in the league. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was seven or seven. I was five or seven. I was like 12. He turned up and like, I'm all right. He was like two duck feet. He was, oh, like, oh, oh. He was like, oh, he passes the ball. I was, like, not, I, was, I, was throwing, I was throwing goal. I went to kick it, my foot goes over the ball, I miss it, I end up on my knee. Oh, uh, I think I'll shatter it. Look at it in a hand for it. I knew what happened in there, man. It was horrid. Oh, bless man. Um, so yeah, we were playing them and then we actually got permission from the FA to go up a year so we could play oh, right, it. Okay. So we could play a year group up, oh. which challenged us a bit more. And we played Harrogate Railway, who in their age had not lost a game in over three years. So like okay. there's not so, like so, so, right, so we're going into this game and was like Um and then there was a Huddersfield Town scout there um, and a York City scout and Huddersfield tried getting me back there and I was a bit like, Oof. you know, I've kind of been down that road. Yeah. Um, and then York City picked me up. Um, I think we ended up beating Harry Railway about 6-2 or something. Um, played centre half that game and scored two. Um, <laughs> until I, that's what I mean, until I went to York City at the age of 15, I was a centre half. Oh yeah. yeah. I'd never played up front in my life. I'd just pick the yeah. ball up and send it off and just run. I was like, like yeah. Forrest Gump, just run straight <laughs> the pitch. Um, and then I played for York City. Um, played for their first team when I was 15 in the National League North. Um, you know, played games against Scunthorpe and all sorts of, of stuff. Um, and then at that point, when I was 16, I had a, a load of clubs kind of come in for me. You know, I think mm-hmm. I had about four or five championship clubs. Um, and originally, I was supposed to go to Derby. So oh, okay. I was on the cards to go to Derby. Um, we were arranging for me to go down and look at the training ground and everything mm-hmm. like that. And my agent kind of rang me up a couple of days before I was going down. He was like, Leeds United have just matched the bid. Oh, and I was like, oh, what yeah, a like, dream. Uh, Bear in mind, I live about half an hour away from training yeah. ground. I was like, sold, like, get me yeah. there. Um, but being a fan as well. Oh, that's just like, it's sometimes your heart. It, it's yeah, you've got to. For, yeah. for me, like, being a boy at Leeds fan, you know, I've got pictures of me like of Leeds in League One you know and me at the yeah. games when I was about six seven year old um, and then yeah I went to Leeds when I was 16 I started off in the under 18s with them um, went into the under 23s when I was 16 setting goal scoring records for fun um, I think I scored about 20 odd goals in like 17 games or something um, in the under 23s when I was 16 um, and then last game of the season in 2018, yeah, it was 6th of May 2018, I had my championship debut at 16 um, at Ellen Road on the last game of the season against QPR. Some feeling that was the winner of that. So was that one that was Bielsa? No, was that, that was the he... Paul Heckin bottom at the time. Ah, right, okay. So yeah, Hecky was our manager at the time then. Um, made my debut with them. And then about two weeks later, we went on a post-season tour to Myanmar. Don't know why we went out there. Bit of a nuts one. Where's that? Um, Burma. Burma. Oh yeah. right, okay. Yeah, so we went out there. It was a weird experience. <laughs> like, playing like, games we, at like yeah, yeah playing games at like nine, ten o'clock at night. It was oh. sort of red hot. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, like a camel back on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we played a couple of games out there. Scored in a game out there, um, and then kind of came back. He obviously Hecky had got sacked at this point. Um, and then Bielsa came in and kind of just worked with Bielsa ever since. Yeah. You know, been on loan a couple of times. Well, say a couple, I've been everywhere. But, um, <laughs> what was that like working under like Bielsa in certain when you saw him and stuff? Was that like he was as intense team. as it seemed oh. from the outside? Yeah, worse on the inside. Oh, was it? A hell of a lot worse. Um, don't like being able to work with that man for the amount of time that I did was 
incredible. Yeah. I think what you're taking at that age as well, you're literally like a sponge. Like, yeah, of course. With the group that we had, with the manager and the coaching staff we had, you just took in everything. Yeah. Like, and the way he went about things, his morals. Like the first, so the first day he came in, he brought everyone into a meeting and he'd calculated how long a litter picker in Leeds City Centre has to work to be able to afford a ticket on a Saturday. All right, okay. And it came out, I think, I don't know what it came out to, it was about two and a half, three hours. So he made all the first team squad walk around with litter pickers in a bin bag, walk around the training ground for three hours with litter pick. Oh my God. Just to kind of get that humility of, yeah. this is what people it are doing. It sounds a bit like, um, like Alex Ferguson. You know how I kind of, back to like, when you start about, oh, your granddad's being the mines and the docks and all this. Yeah. Kind of giving that humility, because I think a lot of players now, get too big and kind of like, oh, I've made it. And it's like, I think it's very easy in the yeah. game, especially with the way that money and stuff's gone in the yeah, game nowadays, course, you know, I've, I've seen lads at 16, 17 year old get thrown 40 grand a week. And right. all of a sudden, you know, three, four years later, they're nowhere to be seen. Exactly. It's like, um, it's like even in my England squad, like we had Taylor Howell, Bellis, who's at Southampton now, Tommy Doyle at Wolves, Anthony Gordon, Bakayo Saka, mm-hmm. uh, Curtis Jones, James Garner. I know it's nuts me saying these names that I'd play. Some of these, <laughs> it is kind of metal, like some of these players that you look at and go, well, four of them you just round off are like in the Premier League. Like, I'm sat here watching them like week in, week out on the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But don't get me wrong, when I went on that camp with them, they were next level. Yeah. Like, how I'd even made on to that camp, I don't know, but could I'd you, take it. Could you tell from at the very start that like, some of them were going to go on to do like, the big things? Oh, mate, done. honestly, so we'd done a training session, right, and then we were doing some free kicks after the game, and I'm seeing Curtis Jones take free kicks from both sides, his right and left foot, and you couldn't tell which one was which. Yeah. He was like, he's, he's right-footed, but his yeah. left foot is there whipping it over the wall. I'm like, what? Was me. I was like, mate, my left's for standing on, and that is it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, don't go much further than that. But it's like, yeah, you see them now. But then there's some team, like there's some lads in that that aren't even playing football anymore. Yeah. And it's like you know the drop. You drop out of the game so fast now. You've got to be so on it. And yeah. like, it's like the to... sacrifice, isn't it? There's a lot of players. Like, I know I keep going back to it, but it's what I know with like the class of '92, for instance. Yeah. They all said we had to sacrifice it. You know, Everything. Robbie Savage was with them in yeah. class of '92. <laughs> you know, like Beckham and Neville in the career there, and the career that Robbie Savage. Not taking anything away from him, but like realistically, yeah, there's Very a big different. difference there. That's the sacrifice yeah. you have to have. Yeah, there's a massive difference yeah. in it. I think the way you apply yourself in the game goes so far. Yeah. I mean, you see lads now in the Premier League, like don't James Milner. Never had a man in a match performance in his life, but he's the most reliable and the most yeah, consistent oh, person in the whole pitch. Yeah. Like, he's what, 38 now? And yeah. He's a Brighton player. Right, 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 yeah. You'd rather have 11 of them players than all these flair players and stuff. Because you look at some players in the Premier League and you think, like, I genuinely, I say to you all the time, I mean, I'm not one about, like, I genuinely think I could do a better yeah. job than them. You're like, he's you know, shocking. I, I'm I don't know what's going on. Like, I, oh see, I see it all the time and I'm yeah. like, how oh, have you missed that? Give us five minutes in the game. I put myself in that situation, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've had a few yourself. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's like how it is with football, isn't it? You always go, I could do ten times better than them. I could beat them. I could do this. Yeah, maybe me. Not so often. When I came down that tunnel that I was saying to you, oh, my ass went. I thought, Jesus <laughs> Christ! I was walking out like a Champions League night. I would have been like, and that was only like with half the fans in the ground. Like when we did the cross match, I was like, half. No one came there. No, I don't know. You were there screaming your name. I'd be going. I don't know. Must be able to come out. There were eight thousand people in there. Do it. Did he do? Did he do? Bring up. I'd be me I think it's one of them where if you're new to it it, sh- it stuns you like I remember yeah. being 16 obviously coming out at Ellen Road so it was 32 and a half thousand yeah. there or something you know one that's of quite on you as well it's like one of the hottest it? days of the year and it's like it sounds weird because people ask me all the time like what was it like you know yeah. I think I'm like the third or fourth youngest ever player to play for Leeds oh, yeah. uh-huh. and it's like they say what was it like like how did it sound? And honestly, I ran onto a pitch. I thought I went deaf. We we're like, it was that loud that you couldn't hear. It. Couldn't hear anything. Yeah. Like it's like there was a barrier around the pitch. Like I could hear my teammates. I remember we had a corner as soon as I came on, and I've run on. And Luke Aylins grabbed me. He's got you've got a fucking gold in your ear, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I do. Oh my god, <laughs> that might have fallen. Pressure that like, yeah. like, 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 yes. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, it's like it's so surreal. I can imagine, like, but I think as you, as you kind of grow into the game and you get appearances, that's when you learn to kind of thrive off it, which yeah. I think is what, yeah, I know that as a club now we do, 
Like you look at games like Bolton away, you know, yeah. the support we had there was incredible. Was four and a half thousand? Yeah, four and a half thousand. Four and a half thousand to an away day in League One. Actually, just before you go on to that, what was that like coming out? Because obviously, when, when we went in, like we were a bit late, so I was waiting for my brother because he was coming from uni to yeah. watch it. And uh, we walked in, these lot were all already in and walked in and I just looked and he was just like, wank you, wank you, wank. And like that, and I thought, oh my God, this isn't real. But I didn't realise when the fort was taken, there was people all along the top. Oh, the top. All along the top. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even realise that. I thought it was just there was people right at the front of the top. I didn't oh. know how big the away end was. Well, yeah, thought, that's oh, what I mean. So I played yeah. at Bolton a few times and usually they like, just section off a little corner of the ground for the away yeah, fans because yeah. they probably, they don't get much more than 2,000 there mm-hmm. or something. And then I remember we've gone out to the warm-up. Like we've gone out, um, we've cut the fans and that as we've come out. Like we've started doing our passing and our runs and that. And then... We've gone on to like a shooting drill and we've looked up and the state, like the stands just packed. I'm yeah. going, have we kicked off here? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, absolutely got in there. I'm thinking, oh yeah. my God, I thought like, it must be half time or something. Because uh, like the amount of people that are here already is ridiculous. Yeah. But then like it goes to show like, honestly, when people say it's like the 12th man, yeah. it really oh, is like the 12th yeah. man. Like Definitely. when you hear, not even like your own chance, but just Carlisle chance yeah. in general or chance for other lads, you see them getting picked up by yeah. it. Yeah. Like, you can visually see it and I don't know if the fans can see it as well on the pitch. Yeah, but no, like, def- you can see sometimes, I feel like from when, when you're on there, it's like when you just come out, you just come out, you come out clapping and that and it's just right, game over and we're going for it. And as a football fan, you always think you can win every game. Yeah. I genuinely was going to that game, I said, I think we will win this because yeah. of the fans, like yeah. how many we're taking. And I will be honest with Garland, it's that penalty, I was like, Oh, yeah, could yeah. Be a per- I, was, I was like, this is now a day now. No. Like, oh, now the own goal from was it Melody in the first half, yeah. and then the guy missed the penalty. I was like, oh, this isn't happening. And when and Gibson yeah. hit that and it deflected, I thought, that's in because the keeper had fully gone. Yeah. I thought, that's because where we were, we were looking down on it. Yeah. Yeah. And that went in, oh, I was on his back. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was going to say, me, me and my pal Kirky were like on the tier above looking down on it, and it was like, it comes off the defender's boot, and you watch it. it feels like it's in the air for like 10, oh, 20 yeah. seconds there. Honestly, even watching it yourself, like, is it it? And I'm sat there, I'm like, Oh, oh, it's it going? Going? and then it's just gone in yeah. and then it's like what yeah. like, how was yeah. that even it just hit didn't it and it was like it was obviously give away the hat trick didn't it because yeah. then it would break but it's horrible because when you're behind it I always prefer seeing it from the side a bit because you can see yeah. whereas when you're right behind if someone has a shot it looks like it's going in you, just don't, yeah. to back you don't even know where it's and going like, just clear <laughs> and then obviously we went in 3-1 and it was like that was unbelievable though. unbelievable some of the lads didn't even know the keeper were out of the goal for that Gibby didn't even know the keeper had come out really yeah. no so until mm-hmm. give, I remember speaking to because I was like, why is that taking you so long to make a decision? Yeah, I was like, shoot, like, was I was like, you've run up to the defender, like try doing the defender. Like if you get tackled, then you're okay. getting grief. Yeah. It's like, mate, I didn't even know the keeper out. Like, until on the replay, I it didn't know the keeper out. <laughs> Oh, that's just like, probably that's you're in the moment. Like he's the taken the touch past the defender and looked up for everything, and he's not seen a keeper in the goal. Well, and then I think that's when he's clicked and he's yeah. just gone, yeah, no one's having this off me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. You're you're not yeah. Gonna, yeah. You've got to, it's got uh, to be done. It, it's just one of the things, obviously with Carl, we'll go into a bit of that now, like some of, we, some of them games last season were, I mean, the ones that stand out for me, Salford. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, Barrett at home. Yeah. The two Bradford games uh, 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 in the, uh, the playoffs. playoffs yeah. And yeah. obviously yeah. Wembley. Like, not saying, but I don't know if there's any... Oh, Harrog- actually, <coughs> Harrogate. Harrogate away. We were at that one when Mox got the last minute. Oh, three Eight all. Players. That was some game, that. Oh, that yeah. was like... Horrible. I had a ton of slightest. Mate, I was, I was yeah. actually... I was out with, with cameraman Tyler over there that night and we were walking and we kicked off and we conceded like dead early, I think, if I yeah. remember correctly. And I was like, oh, this isn't it. Then Charter scored some worldy. Yeah, Charter scored some worldy. Did we not score first? No, we went one nil down. Yeah, and then Charter scored and I thought, and then, what a go. And then we get on it's three. Three. I was like, what have I yeah, like, honestly, man. And when, was, when you're in a game like that and it's like there's multiple goals coming in everywhere, is it like, do you feel like it goes quicker or is it just like all kind of passes? When it's busy, yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, so I remember, I, I remember it being one all and I just remember half time. And I'd come in, I thought, oh my, I've had a stinker in that first mm-hmm. half. Like, that was shocking. <laughs> honestly, I thought I was getting dragged. I was oh, like, yeah. yeah. I went in and even took my boots off at half time and I had to put a book on. I was like, oh no. I was, and then off, about, I was like, oh, <laughs> please after that just don't even put me in for the second half like there's yeah. no point and then come out and I'd put us 2-1 up within like 5 minutes of the second yeah. half I was like actually we're alright yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he put his boots back on and went oh hang on it sucks and then um, 
after that we'd conceded two late on as well. Yeah, that was it. it was conceded, so we conceded yeah, two and went three two down. Yeah. I was like, just never beat Harrogate. I just couldn't believe. It. I thought, oh, you, and then when Moxon scored, it was weird because he'd headed it, and it was like we were right behind the goal. Everyone, had I'm surprised it went in. To be honest with you, like, oh. the way it went in was terrible. But fair play to him because uh, he doesn't edit ball much. No, <laughs> so no. it's like, but it was like he went like that. I didn't even think it was. I thought it was armour really actually at first because obviously it's on like the left side. I thought he yeah. headed it, and I mean we just went absolutely. Unreal. Sol- Salford, I think, stands out because I, I, I thought I was just an absolute batter in that for us. But the Turned game, the stand. game was so fun to play in. Yeah, like, so fun to play in. Um, the support we got there as well yeah. was unbelievable. You know, and I think when obviously the supporters are there and we're playing well, the combination of the two I think would be absolutely yeah. anyone, yeah. Like, yeah. anyone on the day. We. We could go give the championship team a very, very, very yeah, good game. Right. Yeah. Well, like I said, like if we get, if we have like a few more players coming in, and we we strengthen the fan. We've already got the fans. It's like yeah. that's what I say, like saying with like City, but that'd be funny. Yeah. City don't have many fans behind them. I say Newcastle got taken over. Newcastle have the fans yeah. that are already there. Yeah, the that's the fans ridiculous. outweigh any money that's there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's it's funny actually. I just remembered another when you were saying about goals. Was it Swindon away? Has it? Yeah. Oh, that's the big fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, because I was supposed to go with them. Yeah. And I'd obviously broke my leg like two weeks before. I was gutted. And I remember they didn't have it on iPhone, so I was on Twitter and I'm like, it was like 96 minutes, it was like corner. I was like, please. And I was like, oh, and then he fell off the chair. Like, so <laughs> I was like, yes. And they were absolutely. Because I, I, right. watched, I watched the clip back when I was putting together the announcement video the other day. I think he didn't even leave the ground. Yeah. He just fell perfectly, didn't he? He just put he it looked like, I'm going to be honest with you, like, so, don't miss this. Honestly, like, so I was like, it was in the air for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching it. So me and Nels were stood at the back post. Like, so I think it was, it was one of my first games back, I think, um, after I did my shoulder. I think it might have been my first game back and I'd come on in like the 70th minute or something Yeah. and we were absolutely battering and like we're on top yeah. for so long and it was like one of them was like it's going to draw out and be a one all and then yeah. it's just going to be disappointing because we should have battered them um, and then yeah we've got the corner and I remember Mox beforehand had taken a corner yeah. and he's whipped it over the goal and he's <laughs> nearly put it out the stand like beforehand yeah. I've gone oh my god it's like, please, Mox, just put a good ball yeah, in here. Yeah. Me and Mel's are stood at the back post, and Mel's just gone, Edmo, go in there. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. So it like, like absolutely. It's like a Scottish accent, yeah. No, he's from <laughs> I don't even know where he's from, but. Gates, um, yeah. Shields, yeah. He's from Gates or something, isn't he? Was it? Uh, North Shields? Something, something like that. Like that. Um, and he's, yeah. yeah, he's trying to send him into the middle of the box. I'm like, nah, not a chance. I was like, just peel off here. Yeah. Uh, just go and notice, do <laughs> you? And then, like, Mel's has just kind of run into two of them and just dragged everyone with it. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just come to me at the end and I'm just watching it. I'm like, please put this in. Oh, no. I was like, it's on me. Yeah. yeah. I just thought, edit down. But, and there's Meg the keeper and I've gone, oh, yes, uh, get in. Um, what's the relief when you score, like, a winning goal? Like, that's so late on. Oh, Is that the like... feeling of it's a joke. It's so good, man. Especially, like, the way we went about it. Mm. Um... I thought the game itself was actually a very good game for us. Um, and I think we come off so many times thinking we should have battered them when we've yeah. come out with a draw or something. There was, I think there was a lot of times that last season because Adam was like, oh, I'll take a draw. I went, yeah, but it's good having a draw, but at a certain point in time you go, right, draws aren't enough. enough. They're not enough. Yeah. You're dropping away. And to be fair, when you look and go, some of them draws, but the one I always say is the Harrogate one with Box, I go, we should have beaten them, but I went, well, take a point because it might make a difference. It. That point made us get Bradford in the second leg at home yeah. and if yeah, I hadn't exactly. got that we would have had Bradford second leg there yeah. I mean I think we would have beaten them over it either way but it just oh, made I mean, it I still would have hit that yeah. the second leg away I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I, still still come come all, I remember being sudden like yeah. please 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 get this last place you want to go is Valley Parade with pressure on you yeah. Yeah. it's, it's, it's sun like, yeah. like I've yeah. been there went there three times in two seasons because I did we did Bradford away in the league last season yeah um, we did the playoff away leg and then I went on the last day of the season the season before yeah it's a horrid place to go yeah it's not nice and place. that's just as a fan sitting there I'm like, I can't imagine what it's like to be on the pitch yeah. massive it, Bradford it's, it's easy to wind them up though isn't it on Twitter oh, I don't know if you oh, use that see because oh, I'm so just there and it's just like Bradford fire them off the such such it's like when, the, when the subs are like warming up and they're like, the fans are giving you a stick and like oh it's so easy to get to I didn't want to go straight into it because it's obviously the thing everyone's going to talk about but the day out of Wembley with Carl you've been there at Port Vale as well yeah but um when I, I watched him in Wembley three times now. Three times? I thought it was only twice. Three when times, was, the, when yeah. was the other one? Because I knew Port Vale and was the Carlton. Was the Johnson's paint trophy with oh. York City. Oh, we had oh, Macclesfield really? in the yeah. final. Um, three times at Wembley. It was terrible. Oh, <laughs> Aidan Connolly and John Parkin scored. Big and Johnny Parkin was my stride partner. It was crazy. Oh, mate. Honestly, he's some character in football, but yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Unbeaten at Wembley, touch wood. Oh, mate, love it. I, that's not much better than the Eclipse. Take anything I can, mate. <laughs> no, it's, uh, that, that was absolutely... I, I didn't actually sleep on the night, really. Like, oh, I was, yeah, I was, we'd got down, we drove down the night before. Oh, yeah. um, you came with us. Yeah, me, so it was me and Declan, because we were down the night before, and me and my man Declan, we were staying in this like dodgy, we travel lodging. <laughs> Where did we, we stay at? What was it called, then? Hey, wherever you saw it was nice of us. These were in some nice apartment. Me and my mate had drove through. Some of the ends, I was like, right, let's get here. Yeah. He was like, oh, can you give us a lift? I was like, no, no I don't know. Okay, okay, so we had to walk through the depths of Hackney to get this travel lodging. Hackney, that was yeah, it. Yeah, I'll get the end. Yeah, I thought it would be better than win tomorrow and I didn't go through this for nothing. And do you know what the funniest thing was? I saw on the morning, I saw two magpies on the night before we saw foxes. And I was like, never see foxes. And I know that's yeah. a stupid superstition. I was like, maybe. Some bad one, mate, you know. <laughs> I was like, foxes. I'll take everything past. I was there at crutches. I was like, I'll take anything. A badger could have gone past and gone, all right. And I'm like, we're winning. Like, anything. No, um, no, but that was unbelievable that day. Like, obviously, we, on the night, I remember going to bed. Finally got in, lied down. I was like, I genuinely can't remember that I would be sick. I shit myself. And he was like, oh, that's not good. I was like, I know good. You're in the bed, really, pal, and this is going to be a, like a bloodbath. Honestly, it was crazy that day. Absolutely. Did you mental. sleep much on the night before? Or, or is it kind of. Because yeah, you've been there twice now, it? It might just be like. It's not normal. So don't get me wrong. It's, it's far from normal. Yeah, far yeah, from The magic's still there. But right? I think once you've had the first time out of the way, it's all right. It's easier to. Was deal there any with. players that were like. Absolutely, back was Moxon because obviously within the last I mean, they lost they the probably and were, were but they didn't show it. But, but yeah. I know from like my own experiences, yeah. you're bricking it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think there's probably Mox, yeah, like I said, you know, a year ago you were a delivery driver yeah. and now you're in a playoff final at Wembley. Playing for you. And it's like, town and yeah, it's yeah. like, um, so it's one of them where, yeah, you're going to be nervous, you're going to yeah. be cacking yourself. But I think lads just drew into the spirit of the game, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think. Because we'd been there the day before, we went down, when did we go down? Might have been the Thursday night, I think, we went down. Um, and then on the Friday afternoon, we'd, we went to Wembley. Yeah. We walked around Wembley and that, so we'd kind of been there and took everything in. Um, which I think is a, is massively important. Mm, yeah, because uh, obviously if you just go up, it's maybe... You just rock up on game day yeah. and you're seeing your, like, your yeah. shirt in a Wembley dressing room, you're like, yeah. oh my God. You're just like getting, getting used to it. And but all like, that. just getting used to your surroundings and knowing where you are yeah. and stuff like that is, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to do because yeah. it gets you so ready for it. But then like, even like the day of it, lads just seemed sharp like lads were seen on it yeah like usually you go down to breakfast in the hotel and you see a lot of like it's the oh. yeah. like there's lads that have just rolled out of just bed game and it, honestly it looked like lads have been awake for about an hour and a half already yeah, like exactly. lads were up lads are awake like everyone was pretty sharp mm. um, i felt like it did seem like definitely when that i mean that kicked off like <coughs> we went in there the box park oh, and that, that was part just was amazing, like, i mean i could barely like honestly i was but i was so like i think the nerves had just completely taken over because i was yeah. just like i couldn't actually focus but yeah. looking back that was unbelievable that was like because you've got all these people from like around where you're from and it's like there's lads that i watch this that in the like, yeah yeah and it was Imagine. just complete and it's obviously the stockport fans were there and what have you but we were on the training weren't we and yeah, there was like we us, and there was, the was a lot of stockport fans and you were she was singing and i was going me it was just me and him back in the train yeah i got a crutch and then we walked we walked out the wembley way station there in front of us chatting so we just going for like absolute glasses i would have been drinking the car was like seven pound a pint down there i was like that's it yeah going into that same though when we walked i mean even just walking too i was like I haven't been to Wembley since Carlisle last got there in 2010, the Johnson's Paint Trophy, you know, beat 4-1 or something like Southampton. Southampton, Southampton, yeah. And it was like, I mean, I can't really remember that, but I, I remember seeing a picture of it and I put it on my Instagram story and I was like, this is the last time that I would see Carlisle at Wembley. I was like, <laughs> I was like that, like a gap, like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, <laughs> um, and it's like, just in itself, like being there and looking around, I thought, oh my God, and it was just, it felt like this was our time. Yeah. However, when that goal went in, I was like, oh no. Like, I didn't actually believe it. True Carlisle fashion to do that. Go to pot. <laughs> oh, and it, it was just, when it hit, because where we were, we were like sideways to the goal, but we weren't behind the goal. Mm. And it was like, when it got, you, I straight away, as soon as it hit it, I knew it was in. It was it, I knew it had gone over holding, and I thought. Yeah. No, right there, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, was, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hole, isn't it? Um, oh. When that went over holding, yeah. and then we're getting back into it, and back into it, and I'm telling you for a fact, that hit the, uh, that was a handball on that line. 100%. Well, um, I was about to... Um, no, I was just going to say that when that yeah. hit, that, I thought that was on that a stonewall ball. 
Oh, she was a sham one. You were in Boston, weren't you? You were, you yeah. Were, yeah. How did um, I go to VAR? I mean, what, had, it, not, what had happened is one where I've pulled it back to Mel's in it, and yeah. Mel's, so you can hit anywhere in the goal, and he right. decided to smack it straight at the defender yeah. like, I'm like no um, <laughs> it was um, from Amari's goal as well I was, I was, that's once again I was, when I was editing your video I was, I was, I was well I was editing a different video which included that goal at Wembley the ball like comes off the back of you before and Tomari does now something like that it goes round you and like when he takes that shot the ball goes straight past you oh, and you right. turn around mate your face is priceless yeah. it's unbelievable like, so, you're right next to it the whole time Joel's whipped one in and I'm in the middle of a six yard box and I'm going Missed oh my middle. god this is it bang I've gone to side foot it and the defender's literally like stretched out a leg like that. It's hit yeah. his stud. And I've just kicked the air. Like, oh, yeah, like, it, oh. And I've turned around the gun. It's fallen to Maz. And Maz has hit it. And I'm like, I've got a move here. Like, I'm uh-huh. going to block his shot here. And I've like jumped backwards. <laughs> yeah. And I've just seen the ball go in front of me into the bottom corner. I've just gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because yeah, you're like, yeah. And you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's like coming right from you. Don't you can see you're like, yes. And then like. And I'm thinking, oh my god, mate, honestly. I've been watching that, it was like these two crazy. kids were like looking. And I was like, fuck it. <laughs> in front of them, and they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, is it? But, mate, honestly, that, that scene behind the goal, when it's, I don't know if you've seen it from like Stockport fans filming it. When the goal oh, goes, goes, goes like that. The wind's made disgusting. Oh, it? Honestly, like, it's staying in it. Oh, I genuinely, I watch that and get goosebumps. I'll just sometimes watch that and be it, like. I watch it all the time. I can't lie <laughs> to you. I don't know. I think that's quite a fine one. <laughs> Did you, honestly, what, what were you thinking? Because genuinely, I remember being like, so emotional. Watch it. I, I was in well, I was in tears after the, the yeah, final I, I thing, but like that. I remember just thinking, I'm gonna cry at a football game here. What the I've never cried a footy. And I thought, if I was on that pitch, I've had that full volume thinking, I wonder what that and I've genuinely the goosebumps to go through. I thought, God knows what Amari must have felt in like yourselves and that, like when you like Oh, honestly, it was incredible. The thing <laughs> is that like, even when we went one 0 down, I think everyone on that pitch was still saying, We're winning this game. Yeah. I think that's the kind of the mentality we had last year was even if we went 1-0 down, sometimes even 2-0 down, you we're thinking, it, yeah. we're still coming out with points. Yeah. Like, we're we're going to score. Good enough to get like... We know for a fact yeah. we're going to score. Like, and it was one of them where it was just like, it's just a matter of time. Like, it's a matter yeah. of break them down, break them down, break them down. And the gaffer had made a whole point. Like since, so we went in for pre-season on the 22nd of June. Yeah. Um... Was this um, like the first full season that he came back? Obviously. So this was yeah. um, before was it, before we got promoted. Like. Was it my fault? Yeah, because you you've been here a season, haven't you? This will be your second season. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. got promoted in the first season. Oh man, it's not bad. Get in, not bad. Get in. <laughs> so yeah, um, I actually so the time I found out I was going to Carlisle, I was in Australia on holiday visiting some right. friends, and I remember being laid in bed one day. And just seeing Paul Simpson pop up on my phone. I'm like, hey, I've got another England call up here. I don't know how <laughs> oh, because you obviously wouldn't have known he's gone. Yeah, to so he was obviously right. my um, he was my England manager. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and his name popped up to my phone. I was like, hold up. And I was like, hello? We were about 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, he's like, I know you're right, what's happening? And I'm like, I'm all right, are you? He's like, um, has Andy spoken to you? Uh, it's my agent. Yeah. Um, I was like, not really, no, why? He's like, you're going to play for me. <laughs> oh, all right. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like yeah, get me there, no problem. I was like, I can't lie to you, I'm in Australia at the minute. Yeah. And he was like, no problem, when are you there till? And I was, I was there until the 21st of June. So yeah. I flew home on the 21st. Yeah. Was probably home for about six hours, tried to get to sleep, couldn't sleep, went straight into Carlisle the next day. Um, was in training on the 22nd. Was an absolute sham. Oh, <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I probably not slept for about three days. It was uh, it was nuts. Like I'd just been on a plane for twenty one hours. Like yeah. it won't good. Um, and then obviously we'd, like we'd done all the media stuff and us coming out. And then like he'd absolutely beasted us that pre season. Uh, like, absolutely beasted us. Yeah. And he was like, I know for a fact that fitness wise we are going to be the fittest in this league. Like yeah. I'm going to make it our point to be the fittest in this league, and yeah. we'll just run teams into the ground. And that's a point that he'd made all year. He was like, we will run teams into the ground. And I knew as soon as I came, I think I came on at Wembley in about, I think it was about the 65th minute or something around that. Um, And you could tell straight away, as soon as I'd come on, I was like, yeah, these are gone here. Like, could you like, like their, their legs are they now looked, gone. they looked knackered like oh. even at the end it was like yeah. the word, it was just the look like oh my god I can't do anymore and he's, he's almost 
but that's obviously you can say fitness but it's just sometimes if the look doesn't fall your way yeah. fitness doesn't yeah. mean anything like, I remember but, one they'd had a um, no it was us we'd just done an attack and they were on a counter attack and their full back or something's near the halfway line yeah. and I've got not a chance and I've sprung back Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. bodied one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, is and that about turn, yeah. yeah, and turn back at that. I remember like, I was looking at that. I'm going yeah. back up towards our goal and started another attack, but I was yeah. like, I've had about 20 yards, like, you've got about 20 yards on me there, and I've still caught you before the oh, other yeah. and yeah. like, you're finished, like, yeah. you're <laughs> out of this game already, yeah. so that's it, it's 11 yeah. v 10 already. Yeah. Never mind the amount of others that were, don't get me wrong, like, even playing them, their centre halves didn't want to come out of the box. No. Like, they thought, if we come out of the box here, they're going to get in behind or something. Yeah. Like, it was like 1-0 and let's just hold it and get them off yeah, by 1-0. Yeah, it was like, yeah. And to be fair to Stockport, I actually said before, I said if we didn't go up, I wanted Stockport to go up and then it'd be Stockport in the final, obviously in the final. <laughs> for God's sake. Like, yeah, so what was that? Yeah, so anyway, going to when you're taking the penalties because we're obviously, but before that, obviously, Stretton is <coughs> Stretton's oh, absolutely amazing. Like, how, how the holy go right up to that and I was like, Oh, oh, I thought Josh Stratton was going to come out to hold us there, man. I was <laughs> well, it's one of them, it's, it's stuff like it happens in football, doesn't it? Like players that are maybe ex players yeah. or maybe it doesn't yeah. fall for them, or it does, and they're the ones that score the winner, and you go, look what you could have done. Yeah. And when I went to penalties, you, you, it was like Ollie uh, and his pal, Declan, yeah. and then it was my cousin Ellie, my uncle, and then me and Adam were a bit further away, and I went, get away from us. I said, I can't, I can't. <laughs> this I literally sat down and I just went, it is what it when is now. Right, when Charter scores the winning pen, right, I'm, t- I'm sorry, brother. and then I go run to him, he's still got his head down here. He's like, he was not as finished. Gone, it's like, absolutely oh, it's gone. Finished, it's finished. Well, it's absolutely gone. It's like this thing. It's like this thing I'd learned of like, controlling me kind of like anxiety, and that's like, do like tummy breaths and stuff, and I was like, right, I've done this before, like when I've watched like United in pens, and it's fine. I thought I'll be all right. I see you in that moment. I was like, I felt like my whole body was just. <laughs> out. I was like, oh, I need man. to sit down because I had no food that day either. Oh, I was I'm scorching as well. I was oh, scorching. Mate, I was dying <laughs> off, yeah. And the lads behind us, I was just like, look, and I was just thinking, please, honestly, when when he saved it, everyone went, yeah. I didn't celebrate one pen. Yeah. I, I, I'm not even the save I'd stop because Melish is now going to score it. And when you went up. My heart was in my. <laughs> and you went like that and stopped with the. Put the. Oh, that's crazy. Put it in the net, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Blast it. And then you put it in, and I was like, right. He ran across the ground, didn't he? I was like, see, playing that. But yeah. Yeah. It just looked like. Uh, which, how were you feeling when you took out? Because to be fair, he was calm as a little house. We are right. We are absolutely sound. So we'd. We'd been practicing these pens for a good two, three weeks. I heard this off someone and he said that you, you did you not score like every single oh, every single pen. Aye. I missed one for three weeks. Aye. So we'd um, every day at the end of a training session, so the gaffer had have four goals set up. So you'd yeah. have two like so where the halfway li- uh, halfway line is, like on the touch line, yeah. you'd have two goals there, and you'd have obviously the goal at each end yeah. of the pitch as well. And you'd have four penalties at the end, you'd just go round and you'd have four mm. penalties in each one. And he had a different member of staff recording like who'd taken it, like where he'd gone, yeah. if he'd scored or not. And yeah, for about three weeks, didn't miss one. And I'd done that exact same penalty every time. That I'd walk up to the wall, stop, pass it in the other corner to where the yeah. keeper would. Just look at the keeper the whole time yeah. and just pass it in the other yeah. corner. And I've done it every time. And then it's come up to the pens. And like from the five that we'd picked out, so basically the gaffer had recorded like where we want to go like in order. Yeah and stuff like that and I said every time I'm number three yeah always the third penalty don't know it wasn't just Dennis Mellish Deno, you Mops yeah, and Charters Mox, yeah. Charters um, I think has Charters taken the last pen before for Carl Ellis someone said to me I, I, I was someone I think he's would. never missed a pen in any no. t- any game he's ever taken yeah he was like, like it was like a pizza cup because someone went he turned on and went he shook his hand and went welcome to league one he was like what do you mean he said Charters is never missing this yeah and I was like Imagine he had, and he's like, uh, what? Oh, <laughs> shit, I <laughs> shit. Yeah. Honestly. But. Yeah, so honestly, like, even going into, like, as soon as that penalty shootout had finished, for me as a player, I knew we'd won that penalty shootout, oh, yeah. 100%. Like, it sounds so cocky, like, that sounds like a twat. No, <laughs> it's, like, it's one of them where... You, you can think that, like, I didn't. <laughs> I was going like, into it, like, I knew the boys that were taking it, yeah. trusted the boys that were taking it, and were like... I think we've got more bottle than these. Yeah. Like I know for a fact one of these is gonna bottle it before yeah. we do. Yeah. And like just going into that penalty shot, I was just so relaxed. Yeah. Um and I, I even remember watching it back and so Deno's had his pen, Mel's had his pen, and it's come up to me taking it. And Deno's gone to me, by the way, Ed Mel, the ref says you're not allowed to stop or stop in your run up. And I've gone. 
and you're fucking telling me that now. Mm. Oh, I was like, yeah, it's not cheap. I'm just going to take a week. I've lost the line. We're in the playoff finally. Yeah. I've got the ball in my hand. Yeah. And I'm about right. to go take a pen at Wembley, and you're telling so me that now. Thinking, Shit, so I was, so on, honestly, I'm like, 100 mile an hour in my head. Oh, yeah. Like, in my head, I'm walking up, I'm going, do I change it? Like, do I just. Just stick with it? Do I just, just, to retake do I it just change like, it? Do I just wrap one or what? And I'm like, if there's one thing I've learned, do not change it from your mind. Just do what you I think do. that's probably what a lot of when penalties they changed the mind last minute. And that's anyone, what, anyone me at Harrogate just picked it changed my it. mind. Did you? Changed right. my mind. I thought the whole time I'm blasting down the middle. Mm. Right. I, just, I just thought we Harrogate. Literally watching that. Blasting down like, the middle. What the hell has he missed that? I was like, he just scored at Wembley. He's bottling out. Yeah. Harrogate. I thought, like, what the hell? Keith went the wrong way as well, and I've, so just, I've like, actually missed the target. Like yeah. I've done the exact same penalty at Wembley, but just instead of just putting it down the middle, I've put it to the right of the post, and I'm like. That's it at any level, isn't it? They always just say, do not change your mind. Yeah, pick a side and that's because I've sat there and I've gone up and I've gone, right, stutter, little clip down the middle. Not like a penenka, but just a clip down yeah. the middle. Yeah. Like, keepers diving either way. Mm. And then I've gone, actually, no, Wembley, stick with it. But then I've gone, but what if he's watched my Wembley penalty? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. uh, 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 uh. And, and then, then, like, uh, and I'm, then there, yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, before you know it's too late and you've missed. But like, at Wembley, I've just gone, nah. Do you kind of like, whatever. And then as soon as I got to the box, <coughs> like I've put the ball down that, I've done my step back, I don't know why I do it. Three steps back, two to the left, and like I do like a little stutter. I've just but it's a thing, isn't it? Like Harry Kane does it where he pulls his socks up and he, he does the whole routine before he takes it. It's like a so what I like... learned it from was Rafa Nadal. Which, All right, which yeah. is yeah. really weird. Yeah. Because cause before every serve, if you if you watch any Rafa Nadal clip before, every time he serves, he does the same sequence. Is it? Yeah, and so what he does, he bounces it three times, goes nose, ear, nose, ear, nose, and bounces again and serves. I'm like, well, why does he do that? And he's just had it the whole yeah, like the whole of his career. Yeah. He just does that same sequence. Yeah. And I like in that three weeks building up to it, I was like, right, get yourself a sequence that you can stick to. Yeah. So I do three steps back, two to the left. Pull my shirt down, mm-hmm. wipe my nose, wipe up my shorts. You're set. And once you do that, I'm like, I'm so comfortable. Like, uh, yeah. like, I feel like I'm at home. If like, if you're familiar with that, kind yeah. of, it's like you just feel like you're like right. Because you're like right, right yeah. yeah. I've done my sequence now. Yeah. Like I'm ready to go. Like I'm yeah. sweet. And then yeah, I've just like watched the keeper, and the keeper's gone so early. Yeah, I thought he did. I was like, where are you off it? He went quite early, didn't he? He went. Well, that's why. Dennis and yours, I thought. So for me. Watch if any keeper's gonna watch this, I'm gonna get called out. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I like to go third because I like watching what the keeper does on the first two. Right. right. Because you can get a sense of what they're gonna do. You can see the strong side, you can see the weak side, they can yeah. see the timing of where they're going, if they stand up or not. Right. And I was like, nice no, guy, so early. I was like, I've, I, I knew I'd scored after Denos penalty. Yeah. Because he went early for Denos. You well. send him, you've got it. Uh, I think, and all the penalties, he didn't go the right way once. Did you think if you, if you went for it and you saw him going the way you've gone, I can change you could have changed it and scored that? Yeah. yeah. So I, it, it happened a few times. So I think in total, I think we took, oh my God, it must have been over 50 penalties. Mm-hmm. And I've probably put about 40 of them to that side. And then 10 on the other. And then Tommy's a few times in trainers tried having me and just going that side. Mm-hmm. And I, I open and just chop my foot back on it and it just bobbles yeah. into the other side. Oh. But it's like the way I take it, it literally, like, it's a pass. Yeah. I just pass it in. And like, I've seen him go, and I've just like, I think I've been stood on the spot for about five seconds anyway. Um, and yeah, I've just like gone, I've stood, I've just passed it in. I'm just like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> you can see like the relief, and it almost seemed as well with a lot of these, it was like, I think when, when I watched them, obviously you can see there's a lot of kind of composure. Like you were like, yeah, you turned to them, yeah. the fans, and you were like, well, like Melish was like, fuck me. Nah, yeah. I, was like, that was <laughs> I, was I didn't see that. that. I was like already like, oh, <laughs> And when Moxon went up, he said, like we were just saying before about local, like, you could see almost the relief. It was like absolute top corner, of that, especially after Stretton had just put it in the top yeah. corner. Yeah. He went and put it in the other one, and he turned around, you could see when he was like, come on, you could see he was like, thank God I've just scored that. Yeah. And now it's just, I think he's probably all knew that Charles would score, I'm guessing. Did we have the confidence in him? Yeah. Th- yeah. He knew Charles would miss. Because I was watching that and I'm thinking, oh my God. And I literally just went like that and I was like, please. Looked up and as soon as he scored, I just went like that and just burst into tears. And I thought, what the hell is happening? Yeah, for us, as soon as, as, soon as um, Mox and Bins did, I knew for a fact that we'd won it. Because yeah. the last one's Tay. Tay, Tay does not yeah. miss. 
doesn't miss. Just put Carl's name up in lights. <laughs> like, yeah. in. Oh. I was like, Tay's not missing this, not a chance. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, he's just sent it the other way. And if... The thing is, for about three days, it didn't even sink in. Uh, do you know what? I can't imagine it did. I mean, for us, it was like, it was straight away and I kind of went, I can't believe we're actually going into League One now. Like, we yeah. are actually. We were saying on the way, we were like, oh, fucking hell, Blackpool away, Bolton away. Oh, <laughs> fuck me, let's have it then. Like, we, we were actually so went past loads of the Carlisle fans. We were like, hey. And then went past the Stockport bus and he was driving around, get in front of them and he was giving it all. I was going to have the window. I was going to have the window. I was going to have the window. I was going to have the to be, oh, fair, like, though, to be fair, to be Stockport fans, very brave. Yeah, the way, to be fair, I actually always look at them and I always think, I want them to come up next year. They're they, they they really going to make fun real, aren't they? Yeah. I think as far as fans go, a lot of them try to give you a stick all yeah. the time. But, you know, every time we've played Stockport, the fans have actually been all right. They, yeah. they get behind their team. They're not too bothered about the opponent's team. Right. Yeah. Um, well, when we, we were in the service station, I'm going to call them out here, Declan. Oh, Declan's He turned around to one and went, what did he say? He was, like, he was like, no, he was like, so you're trying to wind up, like, oh, I'm a safe journey home, pal. And he's like, what did you say? Like, what did you say? Like, oh, I'll come and say, he went, he went, he went, he shit, his pants are over there. I'm a journey safe. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, hey, pal, if he'd have led the Jew, I wouldn't have jumped in there. Like, I was like, you absolute <laughs> arsehole. I'm so sorry, it's hilarious. You're getting that son, and he's an Everton fan, so. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. It's so funny, eh? Honestly, oh, but it, 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 it was a brilliant day. I mean, not a second memory for us and that. Oh, my best day of my life. Like, yeah, honestly, like, it doesn't even bother. Just, yeah, it's even like stood in front of the fans at the end. Yeah. It's like oh, what the fans had been through with the club mm-hmm. and like the ones that had stuck by us and that. Yeah. Like, yeah. obviously, the season before nearly going down into the national oh, league and that. Oh, like, man, that's like a near impossible league to get out of. So no, yeah, without that, money in there, like, that, the team, that yeah, could have been hard, like, a catastrophe. If I'm honest, I think if I think you just not doing on by the way. <laughs> do you want to uh, uh, I'm <laughs> just making a roast dinner pal I was thinking boom <laughs> 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 so. assassination attempt on Edmo <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm getting a phone call from Simo tomorrow morning. What have you done? What have you done, my story? I'll tell you what, that comes through saying Paul Simpson, I'm going to be like, oh shit. A call up? <laughs> like, I'm in Australia. <laughs> I'm in shirts free. <laughs> oh, I'm in Australia, holiday right now, Paul. I'll get off to you soon. I'll tell you what, if he's watching my crossbar challenge, you might go, mm, he's got decent accuracy. Oh, sure, he's not taking you because you couldn't hit a band off flight. I got right, the first one was close. He wasn't. Like, no, he wasn't. Which he, was, he, was. he was behind the camera going, oh, you can't <laughs> say the first one wasn't close. I went up and just went, first time, bang. As if that's it, that's how it's as if it's easy. Oh, is it? I know. You, know, you know what he said on the car on the way here, right? He was like, heart was... He, he said, no, he says, he says, I think I could beat Ronaldo on penalties, mate. Dead fit, no, dead fit. And he says, and you know what, you know his reasoning? He's like, yeah, no, because when I did the crossbar challenge, I just went up and No, I said, so, I said, it's 50 50 chance. To, I'm not oh saying I'd be. You fucking rat. Did you not see the rat? Did you not see the rat? That's because you called him out, innit? I, I didn't even call him. He wasn't <laughs> even him. I called him. Did you or did you not say that, though? I said, if you're going on a, f- uh, a penalty shootout and you've got a neutral keeper, it's a 50 50 chance. If you put it in the same spot, you might have a chance. I'm not saying I'd beat him definitely. But, but that I'm, is what you said though. You did say that. I would beat Ronaldo because I'm better than Ronaldo. Right, if you're watching, <laughs> if you're watching Chris, Christopher, Cristiano, Chris. get, 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 get on, you know what I mean? Cristiano oh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Chris. No, I'm first name best, me and the pals, right? Christopher Ronaldo. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I mean, what sister, I like, no, there was just, just when we fit, we'll wrap up on Wembley because we've got other, obviously a few other things. Yeah, a few other things to talk about afterwards, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely the. Uh, you, uh, you absolutely got, you'll have to do them quickly. You, you can do them <laughs> no, now while I'm chatting. I'll have right. some quiz questions. Like, it was supposed to be a quiz for me and you, Tom. Give me off one. Said, oh, what's that? Uh, it's a penalty shoot over Ronaldo in the back garden. <laughs> 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 give, give me off one, I'll put on the North Mines. Right, okay. Um, you still have a little chin wide or something. No, it was so. definitely like that with, like you said, I'll be on the other side. Dead professional, my worst. So yeah, so I think with Stockport like, coming up, but it's like Wrexham and stuff like that. Like, it's obviously we've got the money coming in now, but there's no dead cert that. You'll get like obviously Wrexham have done good coming out of the National League. Yeah, yeah definitely. And you kind of go, there's that a cockiness of people go, oh, you shouldn't but it's like, yeah, but you want the the lower down teams to get the money, you want them to be yeah. investing because it's it's all good and well having United and City and all these having billions into them. Yeah. But you want like you want Carl to I'd love to see Carl do a looting and oh, get to the Premier some be unbelievable, wouldn't it? Like, like that would be imagine the away days there. Oh, oh right. <laughs> Liverpool away. We all to remember did that a few years ago. I'm sure Haaland would love it at Brooklyn Park. Oh, oh mate. Haaland from the war. Haaland's <laughs> mate, absolute pelters. Christ, eh. I'm trying to think if there's any teams that's like... I see, I always think from the FA Cup and that obviously this season we need to focus on just staying in the league. I think yeah. that's the big, big game, so it's not too bad going out of the Cups, but I'd love to get like... To be fair, I actually wanted Leeds away. 
I'd love to go <laughs> to Ellen Road as well. Oh, I think that would be absolutely classic. Honestly, or Sunderland that. or Newcastle, something like that. I think in the cup, you want the big games. I just don't want it to be. Yeah, Ellen Road is a be. toxic place, mate. It's Aye. a very. To- I've seen players crumble there. It's. Yeah. Um, it's a very. You're right there. We're starting you there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very hard one to go to. Um, but I mean, even their fan bases nowadays is ridiculous. Yeah. Like the Leeds fans, like, don't get me wrong, I love the Carlisle fans. Like, I've got all the time in the world for every single Carlisle fan going. I, I love them to pieces. But the, just the way Leeds fans go about stuff, they just do not shut up. Right. It's like, <laughs> honestly, you think, how have you even still got breath left? It's crazy because all game they're at it coming up with some chant about something. Uh, and it's always got Jimmy Savile in it for some reason. <laughs> oh, so, honestly, it's, it's nuts. Like, they're so ruthless. Because um, he was from there, wasn't he? He's yeah, from Leeds, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, and usually some sort of team. And some of them you think, wow, that is <laughs> oh, very... Oh, honestly, I've heard some bad... I won't repeat it because no. you might get cancelled. Thanks very much for watching that one. Buckles, thanks for sitting it up. Cheers to Edmo, first yeah, guest. <laughs> some of them are absolutely mental. Like, yeah. mental. For, for this season... Obviously, the biggest thing is obviously I'm being as much like starting that, and obviously I've said that I think you should be in that. Whatever, my opinion doesn't Everybody really matter. Opinion yeah. <laughs> but Quite odd, yeah. how do you kind of deal with that side of it with like not being, you know, because on the bench and that? And obviously, you come off and come on and from a fan, I don't know with other people. For me, I can always see you 100. I mean, every time you go around clapping, you're always giving it that. And for me. I'm, I'm for a passion merchant. You could be absolutely dog shit, but if you're going like that, I'm oh, like, yeah. best That's player here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You can see that you come on and you want to work hard. And I can imagine that when you haven't played and you come on and it's like, say, you need to grab a goal. Yeah. It's probably got like, oh shit, do I pass it? Do I shoot? Do I yes. want to be out the You know what I, I mean? The thing is with football, it comes part of the job. Like yeah. you, you do, um, don't get me wrong, as, lo- as much as you'd love to start, realistically there is no one that starts every week yeah, yeah. you know what I mean even sometimes Harlan starts on the bench and you get yeah, Alvarez right. that plays it's like there are going to be moments where you've got to sit on the back burner and watch for a bit yeah. but for me I don't don't get me wrong I hate not playing hate yeah. it with it like I'm a footballer at the end of the day all I want to do is yeah. play football you don't want to train and get to the weekend the best yeah. part of your week essentially but for me to be able to watch the game I can train all week as hard as I want to train, mm-hmm. which, you know, I'll always train as hard as can, I'll give everything every day. But then to get to a Saturday and watch it and just learn, yeah, like, th- th- you've got two options for me when you're left out. You can either sulk and make a fuss about it, or you can take it as a learning curve mm-hmm. to try and prove yourself, mm-hmm. yeah. which is what for me over the past like six, seven weeks is all I've been doing. Yeah. It's just watch your stuff back, watch where you're going. Because a lot of the time in football, <coughs> people love to point fingers. The manager's not choosing me mm-hmm. or, you know, I don't like playing this formation, don't like playing yeah, here, don't, don't like doing on. this. Look at yourself. I've got one here where we had, um, I think it was in the Cumbria Cup or something. Right. We had Blackpool at um, Penrith. Oh, right, yeah. And I literally just watched one of my games back. I've just gone through the game and noted Mm-hmm. the time and what's gone on in the game and stuff yeah, like that and just that's really good, that. things to like to do well and you know movement in behind is good but try time it better I think it must have been offside or something because yeah. I think a lot of people probably don't take into account like you are still young like you're 22 do you know what I mean like, you're not like the finished product here no no, still no, no. Job, I've you know still got I mean? so much to learn yeah, and it's but like, I think for me I, I, I get this quite a lot you know because it seems like I've been in the game forever because I yeah. came into the game so young so, like I've got over 100 league appearances yeah. like as a 22 year old lad. And I thought you were like 28. Someone said, oh, he's only 29. Like, what? <laughs> That's oh, nice you no, no, but I mean, he looks like older than 21. <laughs> You're telling me that he looks 21. He looks younger than me. Yeah, if I look like that when I was 21, I'd be buzzing me. Like, like, <laughs> he's 48. He's <laughs> <laughs> around. <laughs> um, to be fair, I actually want to talk about that because you said about like um, that you're looking back at yourself and like the reassess and that. Um, and of course, like you said, you'd be like a sponge taking information. Yeah. Who's like, because you know, you've said you've been around the game for a long time, surely there's like a player that you've played with that stands out, like who's like the best player you've ever shared a dressing room with, would you say? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot to pick from, but like if you had to pick one, you know, who would you say? I thought... We do actually have loads of fun questions, actually. We do have the end, so I'd, I'd say... Yeah. Yeah. It's going to sound like I'm just like, might as well be on a Leeds United podcast here. <laughs> but um, I will say Pablo Hernandez right. at Leeds United. Yeah, yeah. 
Like we, we called him the magician because he literally was a magician. He'd be able to ping a ball without looking. Like it yeah. de- he'd just never lose a ball and he demanded so much from everyone. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, half the time I wasn't in English, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like the way he manipulated the ball and just found, he made the game look easy. Yeah. He's one of them players that just made the game look so easy. Yeah. And it was just like, how? We, like, how? It doesn't actually make sense. Um, you see his passes on that, some people just like ping them in. And but then, even like Jack awesome. Harrison, when he came to Leeds, yeah. like how sharp he is, yeah. is silly. Mm. Since you're Somerville at Leeds, yeah. again, technically yeah. and stuff, it's like, what? Don't, like, what about um, <coughs> Bamford? Patrick Bamford. See, what's, what's up with him? Because I, I always I saw him when, he, when Leeds got promoted, and I thought, Wow, he's actually a scored like twenty odd in his first season. Yeah, he's got the hat didn't he against like was it Villa? Villa, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like I thought, oh, but then it kind of seems like he's almost taking a bit of a hit, a bit because you think doesn't see him. Football gets to you mentally a hell yeah. of a lot, like a hell of a lot, um, and I think it had injury struggles and stuff like that yeah. as well. But for me, looking at or from the outside looking in, I'd say it probably was a mentality thing. I mean, we all go through it. I do all the time. Yeah. Um, I think I remember a spell at Northampton Town where I had a shocking season, mm-hmm. absolutely shocking. And I remember driving from Northampton after a game once and I'd had a stink of that game. I was driving back to Harrogate. I remember ringing my dad up, crying my eyes out. I was like, I'm done with football. I'm yeah, quitting. Yeah. I can't do it no more. I can't take it. And mentally, it is so draining. Yeah. Like, the amount of like anxiety and depression problems that come into football. Yeah. I'm massive on mental health. I struggled yeah, with yeah. mental health for so, years. Yeah, well, yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah, I've had a mental health struggle for about three years now. Mm. Um, and for me to look in on something like that, I understand where it's coming from because yeah. I've been through it all myself. And, you know, that's only probably 10% of the picture. Yeah. Because you've got to think like, there's 90% of his life is outside of football. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in that. There could exactly. be all sorts yeah. going on. You only see him for 10% of it. You see him for 90 minutes at a time. You don't mm-hmm. see him in the training ground. You don't see, you see him for a 90 minute period on a Saturday. Yeah. And then you give him all this abuse or all this praise yeah. or whatever you give him. And then he's got to add that on top of everything else. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, it's, it's so hard. Uh, sometimes that like, it, I've been a big one for like the Harry Maguire treatment. I think that's absolutely disgusting what he's had to go through. Because look, I think there's a point you kind of go, you can give, look, let's not like be around the bush. Your players get abused, players yeah, get it's part of the game. That's what happens, part it's of part of the game. But <coughs> like, <coughs> Harry Maguire got to a point where he was like, this is going beyond football. Like, yeah. This is actually getting to a point. Like, Beckham back in, was it yeah. 98? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cup, The three. abuse, he got effigies. And, I don't know if you've watched the new Beckham. Yeah, after I the red that, card and like, the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. people like death threats at death his house and everything. Gun, like, bullets through the door. And you, th- you think, I didn't realise how, I, I knew how bad it was, but, I didn't realise it was every game you'd come out booed and boo every single time and chanting England songs and you think mentally Harry Maguire and David Beckham like you, you've got to take it off and think oh it's ridiculous how you have yeah, dealt and obviously he's come back and got like the player of the month and he's been really good for us like, this yeah, season even, yeah. you know he stepped up and you think it's a credit like I've said like with mental health stuff that's we appreciate you actually speaking out on that because yeah. a lot of people are very kind of you know they don't oh, want to yeah, open up and I think I, I always say to everyone about you know everyone that I've ever spoke to or I know that's like kind of dropped me a message saying you know like, I'm struggling with this I'm struggling with that I will give my time to anyone that needs yeah. it if you need someone to speak to not a problem yeah. text me DM me whatever and I'll, I will always give because I've been through that struggle yeah. you know what I mean I've felt like I've been trapped in a corner and I've got no one there to help me yeah. because like you know everyone says on it there is a stigma around men talking and especially yeah, in a yeah, professional yeah. like in a professional aspect it's even worse i think because like as a day-to-day basis yeah you can kind of you can kind of get it because you know people struggle financially or struggle with like the the way that they're living yeah. but people sh- assume that you're a footballer like financially you're sound yeah. you've got the perfect life like, oh, it's yeah. far from a, don't get me wrong yeah. financially and stuff like that the game's so privilege yeah like we're so privileged to be in the situation we're in but mentally and physically it is draining yeah. why that's why you can only take it until you're maximum 40 yeah you know what i mean it's why we're and even when you get so to 40 it's like what what level like when you were saying before with ronaldo he's 38 and let's be real he's still in mint nick and he's still scoring goals it, which yeah. baffles me how is his body because, just kind of gone right mate when i'm 38 i'll be fat as hell i can tell you <laughs> that right now 
I'll be eating what I want. Lisa, 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 Pablo, he played to us like what, 34, 35, didn't he? Pablo only, he went out to Spain after he left Leeds. Mm. And I think he only retired like either last year or the year before. Yeah, like, which, yeah, even like, he was still old at Leeds playing. He was like 32, 33, yeah. which is considered pretty old in the game. Mm. Um, but yeah, what he did with the football was just crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Like, so do, do, you live, do you live up here by yourself and then travel down back yeah. to Harrogate and stuff yeah. like that? So that can probably, does that get sometimes a bit lonely just kind of being in your house? Maybe you can start at times. So, <laughs> time, so for me, this is, I I'm moved, trying to kind of go, do you feel alone? Like, <laughs> you know, like, so not me, like that. Like. I moved out when I was 17. Right. Um, okay. So I moved out from home when I was 17 and I went up and lived in Scotland by myself yeah. whilst I was on loan at Aberdeen. Um, and ever since I've kind of been on loan here, there and everywhere and I've always lived by myself. So I've kind of adapted to that. Um, yeah. But I really, I'm a massive one on self-reflection, like mm-hmm. massively. Um, and the way that I see it, it's more time for me to sit there and kind of go over everything. I can get what I need yeah. to get done. You know, I can sort things out at home and I get there safe and go home, get cleaning, get some food, like get a bath or something. Yeah. And then in the evening, the evening is yours to do what you want. Yeah. You've got no responsibilities. Like you've got nothing there. You can relax. You can even watch videos of your game from the weekend. You yeah. can watch training through the week. You can go on the PS5 and play COD, FIFA, whatever you want to do. Yeah. But from then on, it's your time. And I've always yeah. liked it that way. I've always loved my own space. Um, but then once a week, I actually go back down to Harrogate and I do a coaching yeah. course down in Harrogate oh, where right. I coach kids. Um, so I kind of I go down there once a week, and when I'm down there, I pop in and see my mum and dad and stuff like that. Cause yeah. I don't see them very often. Um, so no, you know, I've got, actually got quite a good balance in life. I, I quite like my peace yeah. and quiet. It's funny it's why like, I have a missus as well. I, 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 see, I, I used to not like uh, my own. Time. I, I couldn't. I always had to be around people. A few mm. years ago, I went through a really bad kind of like mental kind of. I felt I was just like literally on the deck. Like I yeah. just thought I can't go anywhere with you. And to be fair, like, like with dads and my family and my friends and that they were around us. I was out of it and like now I can just come in like I go to the gym nearly every day well, Monday to Friday every day Saturdays after the footy but I can just easily go on and I just be like I just want my own time whereas before I'd be like right I need to go and see someone panicking because you're not yeah. going up. and yeah, it's yeah. like now it's like that kind of mentally sound even like even starting sorry this, what was that like you were like who cares like, yeah but what if people are laughing at you? Yeah, honestly, like, I was like, you're a freak doing it? this. Yeah. And I'm literally here with Ryan Edmonton. That's hey, it. Like, <laughs> exactly. Here are you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're still giving us views, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, still, it's, it's, it's just like stuff like this. This is like a big, another big step of kind of like, yeah. just putting yourself out there. And it, it, you've I mean, got to. Like, yeah, you've yeah. got to. And kudos to you, man, because it's a hard hold to get out of. Yeah. I've been there. You know what I mean? So. It's, cra- it's all about, it's, it's so much your support system and, it's also I think you've got to be able to help yourself. Hundred percent. Because if you I can't help yourself, yourself, no one else can help you. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's too busy. You don't want to go. I'm doing this because of someone else. You've got to do stuff because you yourself. want to do it. Yeah. This is the biggest thing. This I was like, I want to do this because if I don't do this, and I look back and go, there are a lot of people in my work that work and they're like, just go for it. With if, if there's anything my young, just do it because yeah. don't regret it. And I thought, look, if I end up having a job in this, fantastic. If I don't, it was just a hobby. Yeah. Even more, you know, you just got at least I've tried it and it didn't work. Yeah. Whatever, like that. Like that. The, that actually, I think that's the reason that we've come as far as we have. It's just that, like, yeah. how can you do it for yourself? Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pile on like, oh, he's got a sob story, but you know, you know, like, I lost when I was younger. Yeah. Like, that, it's like after that, I was like, you gotta do everything for yourself, don't you? Yeah. And, and it's like, I feel like as a as a footballer, you know, you kind of have the same mindset of like, yeah. only you can help yourself. Like a manager can Good tell you, train and all you want, you're not doing this right, you're not doing this right. Yeah. But it's up to you to go out onto the pitch and put it different, isn't I, it? Yeah. I barely knew him a year ago. I feel like I've adopted him. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, to be fair, like, because you say we're like, yeah. like Adam lost his mum at the start of the year. And that was like, when we got to Wembley, that felt like it was just such an emotion. Yeah. It was just, it was like, I was lucky, I remember just, because I want to say at the time, I thought, but now we've got this, I was just like, please, please just put the ball in this net for Christ's sake. And it was, it was, it was like, it's, yeah. you know, football's been a big thing for you this year, hasn't it? Like, right. and keeping us all, we're, we're mega close anyway in that. And it's just, it's, if you've got that support system around you, it's, but we always say to like, the lads watching this, DM us. Oh yeah. Always, it's always open the DMs, always. give us a fire, you fire it through. And you know, oh, yeah. come on, chat footy or whatever. I'd rather people's messaging. Oh, you see, like a death in the like on the yeah, hundred percent. It's horrible, horrible, like. But anyway, so we'll we'll move on to something. Move on to a bit of a lighter subject. Uh, <laughs> so, I oh, just quick actually, just when you were saying about your target, uh, Lewis is the top goes. What oh, do you want right. to do when you retire? Like, have you got a thought process of kind of? I've always been massive into coaching and management. Yeah, like, massive since I was in school. You know, yeah. I ran like um. 
in school I was a uh, disability ambassador in school, mm. so I ran my own um, like wheelchair football team in oh, school and stuff like that, yeah. and I take like um, my disability team around the country, like with school right. and things yeah. like that, and we'd compete places. Um, I've helped out coaching businesses and stuff for years and years and years. Yeah. And I I love it. I think, but it's one of them things that I think every player does. There's yeah. love being around the game. Yeah. If you see a football, you're happy. Like, I can see you being a manager. I can imagine you being a bit like a good team. So it's like, like proper like. Ah, <laughs> the fucking touchline. Like, running down touchline. Like, yeah. Doing yeah. a nice well, yeah, manager would be like uh, Troy Deeney. Always <laughs> 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 being Rovers. Yeah. But yeah, it probably would be something I'd go into. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Uh, it's a big time. So. Story. We'll we've do got, the quiz and then we've got the questions and then that'll be. So we've got. Kind of we're holding you back. This is man. Oh no, nah, no problem. This is, uh, I thought the name for this. So we've got professional footballer versus five side footballer. All right. They broke his leg playing five side. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry but, but, but the lad that broke his leg hit the crossbar before. Yeah. So. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you know, football, no matter, eh? so we've got some uh, football quiz questions here off the internet. Oh, duh, this could make me look bad here, innit? We're gonna, obviously, these leech need a buzzer sound, so I'm gonna put it on the spot and ask you how much it was a noise. Oh, Zoom. oh, oh dude, that's, that's horrific. horrific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have asked you, Ryan, what's your answer better than that? Um, oh my god. So, I'm thinking of the quickest thing I can go, Zoom, like, yeah, yeah. What, what could be my buzzer noise? It's like, Edmo. Shut oh yeah, did you, why did we just do that? Like you've done, Edmo. Like, why, did you, why did you make me just do that? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna come Edmo. Up. Edmo, 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 say your name right. Yeah, so, right. Um, these are all like random like European football questions. So, I, I, right. um, I think I'll just do ten, and we'll just see you. Ten questions. Right. Yeah, ten questions. Be able to get the most out of ten wins. You don't really get your car. Lot of the All of a sudden. All right. So, question one. Started fairly easy. Which country hoses the European League title that is nicknamed the Scudetto? What is that? Dan, yeah. Italy. Correct, Serie A title, also known as the Scudetto. I don't know that, me. <laughs> Told you. The keys for scores. <laughs> One nil. Someone hide me keys. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, this one's English football, so maybe a bit more of an even playing field. Oh, I don't know. Which <laughs> club did Alan Shearer win the Premier League title with? Dan Blackburn. Correct. Yeah. Two nil to Dan. I didn't even knew the answer. You know what? I would say to you. Because I thought, why not? Nah, Blackburn. Blackburn. Okay. Um, what else we there? Right. Red Bull obviously own a lot of football clubs around the world. Ooh. Which Austrian city do they own a club in? Dan Salzburg. Salzburg, correct. I keep on like staring. Ari Salzburg. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I really want you to get really it. Do you know what I said that? I thought, I think it's that if it's not. Because <laughs> oh, uh, what is it? Uh, Leipzig and Salzburg. Leipzig, Salzburg. They've got Bragantino on them as well. Um, oh, and then there's How do you know these things? Mate, honestly, he comes out. Do you not Google you? Well, no, I don't know about it. It's in the end. To be honest, a few, a few weeks, a few months ago now, we did like a combined summer. What was it? The leagues, and you were going, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I'm just picking the team when things come down. We do like, uh, <laughs> we do like, uh, there was like English football league predictions, and I said something about uh, Steffi Mabadini going yeah. to Leicester, and I was like, I've seen him like playing in France a bit. And then yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, course, all right, fine. I'm thinking, yeah, it's classic. No, that's what I mean. I get players like out of FIFA packs that I've never seen in my life before. I'm like, who even are you? I was like, he's, honestly, his knowledge is unreal. Like, oh, mate. That one's a bit out of there. Yeah, she is on Google as well. It's good. He's not Googling there trying to find questions. He's Googling a barber to see where he can get his head. Oh, come on, that's cheap. I had my hair cut the other week and you said it looked nice. You said it looked sharp. So what's going on? No, no, it looked all right. It was a fucking state before, I'll give you that. It looked all right. Do you want to look like a helmet on his head? All right. Where did Dylan McGeoch's agent come on? And he he said the same said, thing. He he said, Ollie, what the hell's that, man? No, he <laughs> says, he says, uh, uh, he said, um, he says, sit. he was like, oh, we, I met you at Brunton Park when Dylan first signed, and you haven't had a haircut since. I'm like, oh, I'm a nice one. That's what I'm like. Right. So I'm I'm like every, I've left this just to kind of get the Christmas to New Year. I left it three weeks, and I'm like, I need it done. Yeah. Like, Alright. Okay. This one's a bit of an odd one. I didn't even know this for us here. Right, so we're done. No, no, no. In what football league does the Beckham rule apply? The Beckham rule. Dan, Where, if you, you get this, if you get this, what? Is it MLS? Fuck off, it is. Is it the Beckham rule? The Be- it's like that, you know, it's something with the transfers, isn't it? It was in that documentary. Oh, was it not something like a transfer where they can't buy them and then loan them out? I think that's why it said Messi. It's a shambles, this. They've got this pre planned. He's had enough. Pre planned this, I'm telling you. Right, yeah, okay, rubbing, the answers are rubbing off my arm here. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's one here about EFL football. EFL football, mate, you've been around it, you know it, right? I don't. Which, you're which, which EFL team plays their home games at the Wham Stadium? 
At the where? The Wham Stadium. Mate, I don't know stadium names. Wham Stadium. Wham Stadium. stadium. They're, 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 I'll give you a clue. They're the kit sponsor of that team as well. Wham? Wait, what? What, like Wham Bar? I just, I don't know what I was thinking Wham is in like, uh, blue uh, oh, I love it. You thought well. that and I thought they're like <laughs> sweets and Wham Bars. <laughs> Wham. Uh, Wham uh, Stadium. Yeah. I'll just go. No, I actually don't even know. Bristol City? Wrong. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a rebuttal guess. I'm just going to... Come on. I'm trying, I'm trying to help you so much. Wham Stadium. They're playing red. They're playing red. Are they in the championship? I don't know who it is. He knows. Thank you, Alex. Someone knows. They got relegated. Come on. They're playing red. What's from? No, I don't It's done now. You can't answer me. No, I'm just trying to work out who is. Championship to League One. League, league one, league two. two. The playing red. League one, league oh. two. Just got relegated. Who went into league two? Oh, come on, mate. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if it is. Just have a point. Yeah, the in red, aren't they? Who else came down? I'm trying to think who plays in in red in league two. Who are they? League two. Who plays in red? It's Obviously, got, Wrexham, got, Aki. The one that came down last year. They just got relegated. So who came down? Who came down? MK Dons. Akron Stanley. Akron Stanley. Forest Green. Forest Green. Oh, it's got to be Aki then. Well done. There we go. Ryan Evans has got a point, ladies and gentlemen. Four one. Get in. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, more English football. Reese James spent the 2019-20 season on loan at which club? I was going to say the bench. <laughs> <laughs> fucking does now. I'll tell you what he does. Uh, wait, wait, what year was it? 2019-20 uh, season. Oh, I feel like I've seen a picture of him as well. Where did Reese James go? Oh, no, I feel like professional it. football, this man. Professional football. I don't play. Know. I don't read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's gonna be someone like still in the Premier League. Really. She would. I say. Is no. it Prem? Like, what year? Uh, 2019-20. No, so it's like three years ago. Huddersfield. No, it was not Huddersfield Town. I'm going Wigan. <laughs> Fucking oh, spot. I was Wigan up there. Fucking brilliant. Get in! 4 2, Ryan's back in it, boys. Jesus, what the hell's going on here? Right, okay. Come what back, club did Frank Lampard start his professional football career at? Dan West Ham. Fucking hell, fair enough. Yeah, that's 5 2 to Dan. Right, so you Shabbos. need to get the next three right if you want to take it to the tiebreaker. Get in, here we go. <laughs> pressure on you, Ask us about Leeds. You're good under pressure, you're good under pressure. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get one that isn't like too easy. What team got beat 6 2 at Old Trafford a few seasons? Have you had this? No, 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 I can't do anything for any of that, mate. January. Besides me. January 3rd, Leeds United 1, Man U 0, Jermaine yes. Beckford. Get in! <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine Beckford. Get out. What a point. Oh, oh my. Um, oh, mate, even I don't know this one. No, oh, I'm yeah. not. Even I'm not. You're looking at the answer. No, I don't want a bit further. Right, 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 right. Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh come on. Which striker was the first to score more than 20 goals in the Premier League for five consecutive seasons? Which Premier League striker? Yeah. Five consecutive seasons, 20 plus goals. I feel like it's like between two players. Oh. I'm going to go. Whatever you say, if it's not that, I've got someone in mind, but I don't know. So yeah, I'm thinking the French one. Oh, I'm going to go well, Henri. It is correct. Yeah. Thierry Henri. Do you know what? I was between him and Shearer. Yeah, yeah. Thierry Henri. Yeah. I was going with Henri. Yeah. Well, it's 5-3. I actually might bring it back. You know, this is shocking for you if he brings us back. Wait, I only need one more point, do I? Um, right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. he can bring it back. Oh, no, wait. If I get one more point. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Matt, sorry. What is Juventus' nickname? Dan. The old lady. Fuck. The old lady? Dan Morris has won it. Who it's knows the these things? Him, apparently. <laughs> Juventus' nickname. <laughs> I'll take the keys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? That quiz probably should have been better organised than it was. I was meant to do that while you were on the way of it. I was going to be setting up all You're the cameras. You supposed to do that last week. So I, just, oh, I, was like, yeah. so I, just, I just jumped on Google. I'll get asked it, Juventus' it, nickname. <laughs> right. I only know that from like... Oh. See, I don't think... How does that? You well, don't watch too much him. football, that's what you're I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I, suppose, I, I was going to say, I suppose you don't like, do you surround yourself with much of it when you're not playing or it's just like, I don't know if I'm No, when you win, like, don't get me wrong, if there's football like, on the TV and stuff, mm. um, I watch it, but I mean, I won't say notice of the stadium names and then. No, <laughs> it's like, like the commentators on the city, city. they always talk like, Oh, the Red Devils are, are, are the kicked over the old lady and you know, all this kind of stuff. So that's how I've kind of. That's what do the Red Devils do? No, 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 I'm just saying, like, the Red Devils are. <laughs> well, we've got some questions from fans. Oh, yeah, here we, we go. Have, yeah, we have, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you my action. I'll go, I'll go on the Twitter so I can. Yeah, give them the shout, give them the name. Wait, I'm see. There's this guy on here, right? 
He follows us. It's I don't know who it is. The, I don't, if you want to tell it all, yeah. Don't say, don't say the name until I actually. Okay, I'll you know Ron John. There's right. a guy on. Have you not seen Ron John on Twitter? It's like oh his, these God. Twitter accounts. It's Ron John. There's like London wanker, and then there's this <laughs> other guy, and they're like they just compl- they seem like just complete enough. You think are these real people on this line? So oh god, I don't, you, you have to read I don't know if I want the question. No, 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 I want to see his reaction from him saying this. Fine. It's the name of the account that he has oh, to read no. out. Right, so <laughs> we don't think I'm. Question number one. one from God is mighty bollocks. <laughs> Ucho oh. Ghana. Oh, <laughs> it's a question from Ghana's Mighty Bollocks. Who's your favourite teammate to be around in the changing room? Oh. See, you know what's really the funny thing is, you'd probably say Garns. All right, yeah. I reckon Garns probably would be up there. Just he's just so happy with life. Is it? Like he's just he's so funny, man. See, because like, I thought you'd maybe said uh, Terry. Or oh, Tez, oh, Tez, yeah, Tez. Yeah. Yeah. Terry, don't story. watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, do watch it. Tell all your pals in full of name again. Yeah, Tez could be up there. Honestly, I feel like Tez is my child, though. <laughs> I, honest, I, I feel like I'm <laughs> babysitting every time with Tez. I mean, honestly, that, mate. I, um, where did we go the other day? We went somewhere and stayed in a, an apartment and... He brought a steamer with him. I felt like a proud dad. Finally, I finally. thought I was going to break down in tears. I was like, thank you, because you're not coming out anywhere with me with like, crease stuff like that again. It's like me when he goes and gets a haircut. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. No, you you, 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 you turn around and you're like, you can take the confidence and you're like, look, you look actually normal. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Nice one, cheers, lad. Thanks very much. It's going to be a piss off, is it? Oh, joking, right. Uh, uh, we've got one from Maybe Bray. Uh, Favourite goal you've scored for Carlisle? <sighs> Oh, it's got to be either the pen at Wembley or Swindon, and yeah. it. Yeah. It's probably got to be that massive shoe, isn't it? Because obviously a winner and then Wembley. Yeah, penalty Wembley shoe out win. win. Or if you're going from a night like you take the penalties out of it, it'd be Swindon, or did you? Think? Yeah, hundred like, percent. You could put the penalties in because, because of the whole thing around it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll go Swindon. Swindon, Swindon away. Swindon. Right. Right. Uh, so. Oli Cardis, I think that's his name. Uh, who's the best player you've played with? Oh, we've, we've already asked him before. Did we ask that? Is that? Was that? I asked him. Yeah, yeah Pablo Hernandez. Like, yeah. Or, Which is, or that, Jack Harrison I as well. I think there was another one that was like worded like, you've, best player you, hang on a second. Josh Trafford, yes lads, I have a question for Edmo. Who's the best opposition player you've played against? Either while you're at Carlisle or any of your other clubs. Jermaine P.S. Do you he looks default? good. He looks fine. Ryan Edmonds <laughs> and his Carlos number nine. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you, yeah. you say Jermaine Defoe? Jermaine Defoe, hands down. When did you play against them? Uh, Rangers. Oh, when, oh, I, yes, when I was at Aberdeen. Oh, okay. And just watching him on pitch was silly. I used to rate. I used to rate Defoe. He was, used to, he was like at the back end of his career at Rangers. Oh, well, wasn't he? and he, he was still, still a joke. Still really. Defoe up top and Gerard was the manager. I was oh, like, right, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some combination. I'll say it all, I think, where were we? We were. Yeah, we we played at Ibrox. I think it was during COVID at the time we got pop four one. Yeah, I remember Ryan Kent megged someone and oh, then that like, bins one from about twenty five yards out. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm stood behind ball. I'm seeing it wobble everywhere. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jermaine Defoe, hands down, silly. So, I think but did you want actually? Well, and then we'll do the other one because he obviously said either while. I know he said while or. But when you were Carlisle, was there anyone that you've kind of so far. played against that you thought, fucking hell, he was hard to play against, that you can remember? I'm trying to think now, it's because I'm really bad at this now. No, they're all just shit. Yeah. 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 They're all pants. <laughs> um, played against. I'm trying to think who was. Um, Peterborough's left winger. Oh, um, it's annoying because I had like... Mason Clark. Was that this season? Or was it... We had Peterborough at home. Yeah, Peterborough. We drew one all. Yeah, one all. And they had a left winger. I've forgotten his name. Uh, I think that's Mason Clark or the Adjie Boyer. He's on the other side. Uh, I wouldn't have known They're both in short, to be fair. And yeah, I remember probably about 10 minutes in, he's just taken a massive touch and sprinted off at pitch in like three seconds. Ooh, I was right. just like, oh that's my really God. Right. I was like, coming on, um, yeah. If he gets the ball, I'm not doing a running race, not a chance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, you're going to have a Yeah, yeah, that was, he's 
their team was ridiculous. I thought we'd done so well to get a point together. Because yeah, exactly. I think on paper, they've probably got one of the strongest sides in the league. Yeah. I think they should, yeah. I mean, Gibbons' goal was a bit lucky at the end, wasn't it, as well, to be fair? No, I don't know what you're on about. Oh, he no, he meant it. He, meant it, yeah. he, he yeah, hit he meant that, it. and I thought, what? Because like, when he hit it, I thought, oh, fuck's sake. And then I was like, get in. I don't mind that. Actually, it's crept in. Tracy Sturgis, uh, we kind of touched on this a bit, but how do you stay mentally. How, do you know her? Yeah. How do you, how do you stay mentally strong when not playing regular first team football? I kind of, kind of touched on that a little bit, didn't I? Yeah, I think it's, it's one of them where you've just got to remember where you are in it. I think. Yeah. You know, there's 99% of men in this country would cut their arm off to be in the position we're yeah. in. And so you can't really, you're not in a position to throw a tantrum and stuff like that. Yeah. You just, it's one of them where you got to knuckle down and better yourself yeah. and come back swinging, yeah. which is why competition in the game is so good. Yeah. Which is why, like, even with like Luke coming in and stuff like that, yeah. it's like the strikers we've got, the competition is so good because yeah. all you're going to do is bring the best out of each that's one because yeah, exactly. you've either got one that's fighting to stay as a number nine yeah. or you've got two or three that are fighting to get you out of it yeah. and then you're having to fight even harder against them because yeah. so it tends yeah. to be it kind of goes with a bit of like a two doesn't it front and it kind of sticks with that like do you think you and Armstrong up front because it comes to the plan just like lawn runs out so it's probably going to be you obviously Armstrong up yeah. and then like Garner and that Probably for energy and pace, surely. Ghana's an impact on real, isn't it? Just Ghana's an impact on real, isn't it? Ghana's an impact on real, isn't it? Oh, just like, I love him. Yeah. Well. Some of the stuff he does in the game, I love it. Yeah. I remember being at Fleetwood with him and like some of the stuff he taught me there was just... Oh, it, it was horrible. I was say, yeah, because you were a like, Fleetwood alone, wasn't yeah, you? Yeah, he's horrible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he'll just randomly stamp on your toe and just laugh in your face. <laughs> <laughs> and just, it's, <laughs> is, there anything, is there anything, obviously, while we're at I'm actually quite interested in this now, because obviously where he loves Ghana. Oh, mate, I've got a wear shirt with him on the back, I'll love him a bit. He literally, um, if he hit the crossbar, he's going to go like that. Like, you know, I'm going to hold the Ghana show. You don't take it off. the crossbar, mate. I love him on the bit. Is there, like, when you're at like with him on the pitch or pitch level, is there anything maybe you later and say someone to a player on the pitch that we win out from the stands? Does that does he give it verbal? <laughs> you can repeat. You can repeat. Yeah, I was gonna say within reason, but he gives it proper verbal. He does, yeah. Uh, he says all sorts of stuff. Um, been, been one. I've forgotten who we were playing against. Who did we have? Me and Garns are playing up top, and I've been stood near him. I don't know. Ball's gone out. I think. I think we're just waiting for the ball to come back in. And Garns has turned to the centre half, gone. How the fuck are you a pro here? That like, you're <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the most, that's the most joke the, kind of thing. But the like. thing is, right? Because Joe is who Joe is, you can't say nothing to him. No, like, no. The career he's had is yeah. like. Honestly, I've had like I've heard all sorts of shouts. Like someone's given me like verbal or something. He's just turned around and gone, "Who are you?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know your name. Like, oh, <laughs> like just nothing yeah. phases him in the slightest, and he's just like, "Mate, you're absolutely pony." Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's an absolute big for Ghana. Oh, I think everyone I has him, like the favourites in the team and stuff like that. That you kind of go. Either you wish that you want them to do well or you yeah. want it kind of just... Uh, what's your other Mellish for the Ma- same reason. That's been for the same shit reason. Shit house, right? For the same yeah. reason. Shit house. And you know what? It's, when you were saying at the very start of this episode, you were like, oh, you just play centre half and just run. He just does that now. That's all Mellish like, does. He just, yeah. make, he just the thing is, that, so we say to Mellish all the time, like, what actually goes through your head in a game? Like, we'd right. love to know. Oh, and Mellish is just like, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Like, genuinely because it just I looks think, like it just kind of goes I think to honestly I think the game is just all a blur for him uh, like you can even see when he picks a ball up he doesn't know where he's going with it <laughs> but that's why you can't tackle him because yeah. not even he, he knows, knows where he's going yeah. like, you can't read him we're saying like when we're doing the penalties like <laughs> I remember <laughs> the first time we're doing the penalties for the playoffs he's just run up and shanked one into the top corner I was like you've not aimed there have you he's gone no <laughs> <laughs> When he said, I thought, oh God, he's either putting this other than Wembley Arch yeah. or he's putting it but right in the And then he sat there and gone, yeah, but if you don't know where it's going, neither do they. That's true, I'm very like, you don't oh, know you where it's going. Fair, fair play, play I know. Know. You can't. No, I think, yeah, like I said, I like uh, well, yourself and Lavelle. I'm, I'm, I'm a one for passion, passion like you know what I mean. You've got my yes, Sergeant. I'll call him Sarge. Lavelle, I love him. Looks like an army sergeant. Like that's that. how I call him. Yeah, uh, call him Sarge. Uh, that's that's what that's what, that's what that. we all call him. But he's come in and done really well. I think Sam's yeah, class. It's funny it? because I remember when I went. You came back. You've been in Florida, haven't you? And I went. I tell you what, Lavelle's been mint, and I think he did some. I think the sky went. All right, okay. He's been. He has been good. It's always my thing. Every time I say, oh, he's been good, then there's a mistake. I think. Like, but no. We actually do have a question from a Leeds fan. Oh, uh, how close? Oh, sorry. Wait a second. Let me find this because I put it on the notes. Uh, 
How close were you to breaking through at Leeds under Bielsa? I know we t- touched oh. on that. <laughs> Actually, probably a lot closer than a lot of people thought. Because um, I remember at the time there was me, Patrick Bamford and Tyler Roberts all battling in for like the nine shirt. Um, and we were training for, I think it might have been the Wednesday or the Thursday for Wigan on the Saturday. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to have Wigan on the Saturday and we were training and stuff and I, like the gaffer had spoke to me and stuff like that and I was due to start on the Saturday against yeah. Wigan. So he told me like, you're playing on Saturday against Wigan. Yeah. And then we were doing a 11 v 11. I've gone out to press the keeper, the keeper's pressed it to the centre half and as I've turned like that, uh. my legs just locked and I've popped my meniscus out. Oh. And I've done my meniscus and I, honestly I was like, oh my God. No, I, no. My leg just locked out straight, I couldn't move. Like, mm. I've got Bielsa going, what are you doing? Like, Please. shouting at me in Spanish. I'm like, I can't move. Like, yeah. <laughs> literally, quite scared I'm like, like that, I'm like, literally, I can't, I'm trying to walk, like, run around like, with a peg leg. Like, literally, my leg is just straight. Like, can't move it. Like, it's just Jesus. a metal rod. Like, screaming, I'll be like, and, uh, yeah. the translator and then I've got Bielsa like, screaming at me. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm dust. And then he pulled me into the office about a week later and apologised. He was like, yeah, he was like, I didn't, like, obviously, I didn't know what was going on. But, and then he texted me whilst I was in the hospital, actually, while I was getting surgery, just saying, I hope everything goes well. Um, and then after that, I think it just, with the amount of rehab that it takes with knees and stuff like that, yeah. I think kind of everything just kind of blown over and my height was gone. <laughs> um, I think I ended up being out for about four or five months. Yeah. I think the season had finished by then and stuff anyway. And then... Yeah. Um, by the time the new season came around, I think I'd gone on loan. Yeah. So I'd, I'd gone out to get minutes elsewhere. But yeah, you know, if if I don't do my meniscus and I play on that Saturday, and some career could have been a whole lot different. Yeah, yeah. But it's the way the world works. Yeah, exactly. But I would change it for a thing. That's from someone called uh, Joe Robinson. Just I didn't say that before. I suppose there's like there's a lot of pressure on young lads now, isn't there? To like to make it. Like if you're in an academy, like he's, he's the next big thing. He's the next big thing. But it, I mean, you, it is big. You've been around the EFL, you've done your, your time in the EFL team, but I mean, even that, that's an incredible career in its own right. You know? it, it, that's what I mean. I think the percentage of people that actually make it and get a professional career out of football is so slim. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm my own harshest critic. Like, I look back and think, you could have done this, could have done that. Like, you're so much better than this, you're so much better than that. But then you've also got to look back and you've got to think, like, look back to when you were 15 at York City how bad you were. Yeah. Like, when I look back to it, I was shocking. How you people know, even you paid... You never do, though, do you? It's like anything. Anything you, you like. Never you never... You, you sometimes just think, oh, I've not made any improvements. Yeah. I've not yeah. done anything. It's like gym, like body dysmorphia. It's all yeah. about that. And I look and think, I was like that. And I still think, I look like that. I mean, yeah. If yeah. any of you say that now, I'll kick off and I'll be gone. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. you got my heart. <laughs> no, I'm wearing an extra small, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a 12 to 13. <laughs> Girls, actually. Like, so <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's, it's like that thing, isn't it? You never see it until you maybe look back and you go, of course you've come yeah. on with some yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you naturally get back. I, I had that recently, to be fair. I was, um, I was out on a film shoot with you, um, t- camera on time, around the camera, um, and I was speaking to the person I was asking with, and I was, I was just like, oh, we've got like, I, think we, I didn't like mention on name anyone, but I was like, we've got some like, interviews coming up, hopefully, yeah. like in the future. And she was like, do you actually understand how mental that is? Like, that you've done this? And I was like, we sat, we said it. just before you put, you turned up, I was like, oh, and I was like, how have I got to a point that I'm sitting around saying, Ryan Edmondson said she comes to my house? <laughs> in fact, we started this three months ago and we're like, will it work? Will it work? And it's still not, we don't know if it will or not, but it's just even doing something like this. It's working, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the fact we just turn around, I think sometimes we sit and we kind of go, this is actually mental, the fact that we've got to like a point that we, you know, I think we seem to be approachable that you're happy to come around to. Oh, mate, honestly, the, the thing is, like, when you two approach me, even at the games, like, with. Um, interviews with like your phones and stuff like even just like doing reactions to stuff the thing is like you've got to give yourselves credit for is just how approachable you are like you know you've said it you've said it you've said about you interviewing like thomas and that and like saying look if you don't want to do this it's not a problem whatsoever where you find so many people nowadays in like the media game 
will try to do anything just for a yeah. response. Mm-hmm. Whereas you two just down to earth normal lads yeah. like from Carlisle that are just trying to do something. Right. Appreciate that, man. Oh, oh, well, well, I'll yeah. that for a week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, honestly, it's a big respect to you all, and even like the cameramen, the work you put in is is it's good. Yeah, yeah it's it's just should, you should be proud of yourself. Like, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to be like, we wanted to be something different. We wanted to because we say we said this. It's like I said to Ollie. Said the thing is, if we're approachable. I've said to anyone we've asked, there's no obligation to come on. If you do not want to come on, it's not not your kind of vibe. That's absolutely yeah, we get it. Because some people don't want the camera on them, they don't want to <coughs> feel awkward. But the fact you just went, yeah, go. And this this will most likely be, hopefully anyway, with the feedback will go like that. And hopefully yeah. we can get, you know, yeah. more people from it and stuff like that. That's what I mean. The thing I've always said to myself about putting yourself, the worst that can happen is someone says no. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's it. It's, that, it's that nervy thing. How yeah. it, look. Ed Moy is not going to turn around and go, fuck off. <laughs> he's not going to turn around and say that. He's just going to go, he's like, look, it's not my kind of thing. And when he went, yeah, I was like, uh. Yeah, he was like, uh, yeah. this? Oh, I love it. Like, I was like, oh, best you've been so long, mate. Just different number. I, was, I said to my pal, I was like, I've literally got like Ed Moy's number. <laughs> and he went, that's just not like, what the fuck? Um, oh. I've actually I've got uh, one more question. It's from Mitchell Graves. Um, he says, a question for Ed Moe. What was going through your mind in my video of you celebrating with the fans? You know when you're like, yeah, right, the weekend. I was going oh, there, God. And he right, filmed dude. that. Christ. Uh, I've, I've seen that video, actually. I've seen it. <laughs> I, what am I doing? <laughs> I, loved it. I was like, oh. Oh. I think, like, honestly... You know, um, honestly, that goes a long way. I think it's crazy. Fashion. For me, I've been around football so long now where the last club I actually belonged to was Leeds United. Mm-hmm. That was my first club I belonged to. And... Carlisle's the only place that I felt permanent since. Oh, yeah. And honestly, the reaction that I've got from everyone being here, I love this club more than anything. Yeah. I absolutely love the club. I love the fans. You know, everyone in Carlisle's just so happy, so down to earth. Like, you can go into town, like, and go sit in Costa and have a chat with a randomer for an hour. Yeah. Like, you, and you wouldn't even. I can like, imagine you probably get a bit like. Oh. It's, it's funny because you get stars. So we saw them, we saw them, we saw Feeney when we came out of bowling, and I was like. And he was like, looked at us and it was as if we were going to hang. I was like, I didn't know what to say. Was, this was like last year, like last season. I was like, it was one of them things I was kind of like, oh, it wasn't really I had an interaction with many car fans, uh, car players. And I thought, oh God, I don't want to go, all right. And he's like, all right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks. Yes. Sound. I'm going to drive myself to the nearest bridge. <laughs> but to be fair, when you said that, his other question was, what does Carla United mean to you and how proud he is to be part of this club? But you kind of just answered that. Oh, right? yeah. Honestly, right. it's, it's everything. Everything. This club's so good. I absolutely love being here. Like being part of this club's unbelievable, and the fans and that as well, and being able to do what we did last year for yeah. the fans, and even like the city as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Just to be a part of it was. I've never seen. I've never seen the city that full of happy people. Oh, that's what definitely. I mean. I've said this. I think since Carlisle's doing better, this city the seems to be better. Yeah, and that that's definitely it. when the football team's doing well, it's yeah. crazy. It's, it's that the impact it has is like Newcastle mental. or Sunderland or whatever. Like yeah. that. Even, I'm talking about like northern teams, but yeah. when they're doing good. You can see the city, everyone looks oh, like, yeah. yeah, let's get out and stuff like 100%, that. 100%, 100%. Class. We did actually say, when we were doing this, I was like, he went, oh my God, could you imagine if we did like carpool karaoke with him? I went, what? Me in the front, you yeah, and Terry. Yeah, why? That's what I was saying. Like, me and Terry in the back, that? you two in the front seat, get the tunes on, mate. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I do that all the time. <laughs> oh, shocking. mate, we need, to, we need to make it happen. I've got videos of me singing like Taylor Swift and everything. Oh, we've got to make it happen now. How many likes should we say we're going to get? Right, do you agree to this? Do you agree to this? Carpool karaoke. What are we saying? 100 likes on this video. Or right Edmonton and Carpool Karaoke, and it, it will happen. 100 we, likes, we you reckon? Yeah. Oh, what do you think? What? what do you think? Get 200 out of that. 200, 200, 200 likes, on, we'll do 200 Carpool. likes, Carpool Karaoke, right Edmonton. You saw it here, we shook hands <laughs> and everything. Oh, you know what? It's going to The laptop's getting low battery. I think, honestly, mate, I could sit here and talk to you all day, but <laughs> I think we might have to. Um, this has been fantastic. No, no fellas. Well, thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's, it's, um, it's, 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 it's very On fun. a final one, oh. if you had to choose someone to come on this next, one of the players, who would you choose? Who do you think would be good to get on? Oh, um, I've got an answer that I hope he's going to say. <laughs> I think I know who you want me to say. You don't have to say it. But. Oh my god, hey, look at him, he's nearly crying. <laughs> I, know, I know he wants Garns. Oh, mate, come on. Who do you think would be good to get Who on? do you reckon? You'd have unbelievable crack with Tez. Terry. With, with Terry yeah. on it. Terry would be hilarious. Well, if we get 200 likes, he can come on and do the carpool karaoke with us. Terry, oh, go on, I'll, then. I'll get Terry involved, don't worry. Right, oh, I'll get Terry involved. This could be absolutely 200 likes dying. for the best video you've ever seen. <laughs> it's not that hard, right? You know what's scary, eh? I actually think we might possibly get, could get 200 likes. Because like. we've got about 88 or something likes on the Blackpool vlog. 
You know, three thousand views. And if we, if we gonna, say it on the Twitter, two hundred likes, they're like, yeah, go on then. Two hundred um, likes, and we are going to sing. see me singing that. What have I done that for? Well. What have I done that <laughs> for? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was doing it in your car, not my like Fiesta. I'm like, hey, is everyone in all right? <laughs> oh, in the back. <laughs> Mate, I'm not going to like, really. Oh, my God. Like, do you imagine oh. that as we were driving around town and people are like, we're like, what the fuck's going on there? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, honestly, Edmond, oh, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it's really great time, mate. Thank you very much for watching this week's episode. This has been a very kind of surreal experience. So, <laughs> if you want more content like this, you know what to do. You need to press that like, you need to subscribe, you need to share it with your pals. Uh, I think that's how we end it. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bit Everyone, any last words? Up the blues. Up the blues. <laughs> 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 we'll see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>